Welcome to Time Out with Coach Mike Miller. Coach Miller is the basketball coach with the most wins in LACC history, coaching his teams to a national record of 14 straight conference championships, breaking UCLA's old record of 13. Coach Miller is the first basketball coach in California basketball history to win a state championship at both the high school and college levels. Coach Miller has been honored as Coach of the Year 18 times and has produced almost 100 Division I players. For the next two hours, get ready for stats, facts, rants, and your opportunity to chat with one of the most successful basketball coaches in the entire country and his friends. Time out with Coach Mike Miller. Hey, we're live. We're on the air. Welcome to Time Out with Coach Miller. Excited to be here, Scott. Yep, it's good to be back. The building stood up. Yeah, the last week you were worried about the earthquake, right? Yeah, I was pretty, uh, I wasn't worried, but I was aware of, aware of uh, the potential of a uh, large earthquake. Hey, Jeremy, correct me if I'm wrong. Scott was really scared last week on the show. There was an earthquake uh, right before the show, and he was really scared, right? Yeah, yeah. He Well, he was in the, the subway, you know, and he just went through a, a subway apocalypse kind of uh, story at his <laughs> storytelling event. It was fresh in my mind, but I, but I was secure knowing that I knew what to do in the event of the big one while underground. Although, Jeremy, uh, that's uh, the kettle calling the pot black because... Uh, uh, I was really scared. Yeah, yeah, you were definitely scared. Yeah, it freaked me out. Yeah, hey. he was outside waiting for me. Hey, these two guys are from the East Coast somewhere like Boston and, and uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah. So uh, all I could say is it didn't bother me a bit. Well, they yeah. have coal shaft collapses in Pennsylvania and stuff. Yeah. You know, in the Boston, mines, yeah. you know, we have tunnel collapses yeah. and, you know, uh, and explosions in the street. So Jeremy was like this. He was like... <laughs> Can, can can you hear that? Oh my gosh! Can you hear that? After six months, yeah. Coach yeah. Miller has uh, figured out the uh, effects <laughs> that was me. board. Yeah, and and Scott Scott was more like you know like he was more like <laughs> he was more like that. Yeah, yeah. So, I was a little disappointed that I didn't get to feel it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, great to be back. We got a great show tonight. Special show because we have a big event tomorrow that our show is sponsoring. And I always start off by introducing our team, Jeremy. Uh, welcome back. Thanks for running the uh, the uh, sound room tonight. How's it going? Uh, good. A little tired, a little hectic, but I've uh, been grinding this thing all week, but uh, ready to go. Yep. Yeah. And I've got Scott over to my left, Scott Schultz. Good to be back. Got all four of my picks in the uh, Elite Eight wrong last week. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Maintaining my streak. <laughs> well, <laughs> the thing I know about Scott, he goes back with me many years, Coach Johnson, is... You know, he's the guy you want to go to Vegas with, and whatever he picks, you bet the opposite. <laughs> okay. He's that guy. I don't he, gamble. He's that guy. So um, I just gamble with my life choices. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, anyway, uh, uh, I've got Judd here in the studio tonight with us. Uh, Judd, are you ready to go? I am ready. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Judd, let me ask you a question. Should this camera be over here on on Daryl? And, um, and, uh, it doesn't have to be. No. But we're doing a wide angle right now of everybody at once. Okay, you got you, switch the you, you got everybody you got everybody on yeah. you got everybody on the air. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. Yeah. Here yeah. comes the boss. Jeremy's coming in. He's looking like I've got this camera thing. I'm gonna fix this. Okay, great. Well, we are here. We are live. We are on Skid Row Studio, Scott. That's right. We're uh, up on the eighth floor in the. Uh, you know, I noticed this. This building used to be a diner. Uh, back in the day, there's in the back of the building. You can I came up uh, Hope Street, uh -huh. and which is right behind uh, where we are here in uh, uh, Jewelry District adjacent. And uh, you know, on the back of the building, there's a big um, like painting mural of uh, you know how some of these older buildings, you know, they just never bothered blasting them off or anything. Right. Or, yeah. Or why, they, why spend the money? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Because no one lived down here for so long. Right. And. Uh, so it was some diner that used to be located here, um, you know, a long time ago. Okay, well, weird. here's the thing, Scott. Maybe that explains the rats. No kidding. <laughs> we have got Coach Johnson. Have you seen the rats outside? Have you been in that yeah, parking lot? yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you guys see any rats? They parked my truck. Nah, nah. <laughs> no kidding. Okay. You better watch it. They'll take your truck for a joyride. Yeah. You know, Ferris Bueller style. We've got some big rats down here at Skid Row Studios. They're outside, of course, but yeah, they got iPhones. They've got 
Well, we're jewelry district adjacent, so we like yeah. to say the rats that we have have bling. Yeah, they're they're fancy rats. They wear gold. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So um, anyway, maybe that explains the huge rats that we have. That this used to be a diner, and these are like the no kidding. You know, the offspring of those giant rats from back maybe, in the twenties. Maybe we should let them follow us to the pantry next time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we usually eat at the pantry after the show. <laughs> Coach Johnson, we usually go down to the pantry. We're in downtown here, and we like kind of hanging out. They could just follow us. You know, the pantry is this. Have you ever been to the pantry? Yeah, yeah. They don't have a key on their door because their sign says, and they don't have a key. They said, we have never closed since they've opened in the 20s. There's no key. There's no lock. Okay. The doors just have no key and no lock. You just walk in and walk out. They're open 365, never yeah, 365 days a year. 24 hours a day. Yeah, see, that that can happen in a city like L.A. because the weather never changes, you know, so you don't have to worry about, like, freakish conditions like a blizzard or... How about if there was, like, a major earthquake, though, Scott? Yeah, but how often do those happen? And really, in a major earthquake, you want to have your door open. Last thing you want to do is deal with a key, you okay. know, a key in a lock. You're running for your life. The building's falling on top of you. You know, uh, plus, if there's a major earthquake... The doors will just shatter, <laughs> you know. It's it's not like they have the same doors from like 1906. Well, that's you know? true. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Okay. Well, listen, we've got a great show tonight. We have a big, big event that our show is sponsoring uh, tomorrow over what's, at. What's that called? It's called the Los Angeles Classic, and it's over at East Los Angeles College, and it is an event that's kind of unique because it really focuses on recognizing and honoring. L.A. City section players and coaches and their achievements and, and what, what they do. And this week I was able to get out to see all four teams practice. We have a, a South Side team and um, uh, Jayon. 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 I'll get it. Jayon. Jayon. Jayon is on the South Side team. Jayon is at New Millennium, right? Right. High, high school? Yes. And... Jayan um, was there at practice today. I went to the South Side practice today, Scott. So, uh, by the way, Jayan Jefferson Roberts, long name, a mouthful. You know, <laughs> yeah. if we could get ten dollars for every letter in your name, we'll be rich. Yeah, we'd be. See, he's got personality too. Big Scrabble score. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, Jayan was on is on the South Side team. I was at their practice today. Um, Yesterday, I was at the the Valley team practice. Okay. And um, let me see. The day before, today's Friday, Thursday. Wednesday, I was at the East Side team practice. Okay. And Tuesday, I was at the West Side team practice. Daryl, I saw you at the West Side uh, team practice on Tuesday. So yes. is it looking like a, uh, a tight, you know, match? couple you, tight games. You, you know, I, I have my own thoughts on it, but I don't want to, you know, I've got to support all the teams and, yep. you know, I, I have know. my own thoughts. But I do believe you were uh, four for four in your... Um, in my in my <laughs> final eight picks, I think I, I was... I think I was 0 for four and you were four for four. I think I, think I was. I think I was four for four so maybe you last week. Maybe you shouldn't say. <laughs> but what I'll say is the West side and the South side have really good teams. Really good teams. What do you guys think? What do you? Let's start with you, Daryl. What do you think of your team, the West Side team? Um, honestly, I, I feel like our team is very athletic. We can run up and down the court, play defense, fast break, everything. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's look at your roster. Let's look at your roster. Let's start with the West Side. Yeah, you've played with a lot of these uh, guys, also, right? Like yeah, played, against them. played against them. Played against sure. them. Sure. Yeah. Travel ball. Yeah. During the league is pretty good. And, and 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 in your team at View Park had a really good great year this year. You guys won your league, didn't you? Yeah, this is uh, actually the first time we ever won league, and I'm just glad to be a part of that. Yeah, that was a, it. Was a great run for you. Now, who is in your league, Daryl? What what teams? Uh, we played Crenshaw, Dorsey, Fremont, Locke, West Adams, and um, Manual Arts. Okay, Manual Arts, and okay, gotcha. So. There are players on the West Side team that you played against during league play. I'm looking at the roster right now. Mm -hmm. 
So let's kind of go over your roster, and then we're gonna then we're gonna go look at the South Side roster since we've got you guys in here representing the West and the South. So the West Side uh, roster, we've got Crenshaw represented, uh, Manny Haygood and Raymond Brown. Uh, you played against them in 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 league play twice. Then yes, we did. You beat them twice, right? Yes, we did. Nice, <laughs> nice. Cren Crenshaw had some talent too. Yeah, you you guys you guys played a little bit better together. I thought. You know, I saw you guys play maybe three, four times, probably at least three. I saw Crenshaw play twice. I thought you guys played a little more, maybe a little more team ball. It, yeah. Would you agree with that or not? Yeah, I, I I do agree because in certain in instances, uh, Crenshaw they they tried to go one on one a little too much. They tried right. to pick. They didn't really pick and roll, but they tried to one on one straight to the basket for shots that they didn't really need to force. Right, right, and and uh, they they had some good talent though. Anyway, they've got two players on the West Side team: Scott Dorsey. Um, Daryl mentioned Dorsey is in his league. Dorsey has one player, Ali Muhammad, yeah, big uh, guy. Yeah, you yeah. know, him? very athletic. Yeah, very athletic. Yeah, yeah, very. Coach, do you know Ali Muhammad? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait a second. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wait, I just realized what I said. I'm sorry. <laughs> Coach Johnson knows Ali Muhammad. Yeah, yeah, I know Mr. Muhammad. Yeah, I bet you wish you didn't know him. I bet you we. I wish we'd have guarded him better. That's yeah, what I bet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're all we're laughing. Me and Coach Johnson here, Coach Johnson from Washington Prep, because they played him in the playoffs, and I was at that game, <coughs> and they lost in overtime. Right, Coach? Yes, sir. And and I think Ali Muhammad hit a hit a big shot there. Yeah, he did. Big big three. He had a three with the clock winding down. Yeah, yeah. Was that to force overtime? Or was no, that, that that was in overtime? That was to win the game. That was to win the game. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So so that's why Scott, I'm I'm I realized after yeah. I said it, I thought, uh oh. <laughs> Coach does know Ali Muhammad. Okay, let's go back to Daryl. So athletic. You describe his game just athletic and Um, for the most part, yeah, because when he when we played against him, he was rebounding, he was scoring you know, second chance opportunities. He uh, he actually tried to dunk on somebody in the game too. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Do you ever try to duck on anyone, Daryl? No, I I don't try to dunk in the game. I mean, if if I have it open, I might give it a shot, but that's yeah. about it. Yeah, I got you. But you're not you're not trying to go dunk on someone then. No. Okay, I got you. Um. Okay, then we go to Fairfax, uh, Sage Woodruff. You you saw him yesterday at, at practice. Yeah, I saw him at practice. He um pretty 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 good. Pretty good player, right? Yeah, all around player. Yeah. I agree. Uh Manuel Arts, another guy in your in your league, uh Khalil Flowers. Yeah, Khalil, um he likes to he likes to get to the basket. If he has a wide open shot, he's gonna take that shot. He's yeah. gonna make it. Yeah, he's he's very athletic too. Yes, kind of plays hard. He kind of when he wants to go to the basket, he puts his head down and dribbles that thing and gets there, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. And he I, will get to the free throw line. Yeah, he does. Boy, you're right. He does get fouled. You're. I, I'll give you that one. Daryl has a good analysis, Scott, <laughs> of these guys here, but he should, right? Because he's, yeah, he's probably been playing with them and yeah. been against them your whole life. Right. Okay. Uh, Pal Palisades, Aaron Johnson. Uh, I, I, AJ. I'm. I seen him play. Um, I played in a, at a Pango tournament. Okay. Yeah, he, he can shoot. Yeah, he can, he can shoot. He can score. Yeah, I don't really know much about him, but okay. from what I've seen, he's good. And, but you've had two practices with him this week, mm -hmm. and University <laughs> uh, 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 Darnell Bettis and CJ Sonata. Darnell, he, you like Darnell? Darnell is he's a general of the floor. He runs he runs plays. He gets people open. That's right. Yeah. CJ, right. he can, he can really shoot. He can really shoot, and, and Darnell's a lefty too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Darnell's a lefty. I like Darnell. And then Venice, Jason Ball. Jason Ball, he's crazy athletic. Yeah, quick. Quick beast. Yeah, a beast. Oh, beast. Coach, Coach Johnson, you got <laughs> him as a beast. He's a beast. Okay, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> and then we got this View Park prep here. I got Jason Carter, and I've got uh, Daryl Mick. Ellen. Well, um, <laughs> Jason Carter, just put him in the game. He'll do work. 
He'll get some rebounds. He'll get it done. He'll, he'll get, get it, it done. done. Anything you need, he'll do it. Okay. For myself, um, just know if the shot goes up, it's going in. Yeah, I know that. I know that. I, I saw you play. I was like, hey, Scott, he can shoot the ball. Yeah. Daryl. Shoot threes or shoot mid-range? Or... Uh, he, he can shoot, shoot the three. Yeah. I mean, that's the main shot I've seen him take. Yeah. The thing I like about Daryl is he doesn't force shots. He doesn't hunt his yeah. shot. He waits for the game to come to him. Yeah. And he takes good shots. Can and he, he shoot off the dribble or, or spot up? Well, what I've seen him do mainly is he waits for his op opportunity mm -hmm. and the ball gets reversed to him and, yeah. and he's open and he, he shoots it and, and he's right. You know, when it leaves his hand, you, you think it's going to be good yeah i mean it, every shot looks like a good shot yeah and is very consistent and the ones i've seen you play i've seen about three games i mean you made most of them are you do you focus like corner threes or do you go all throughout the perimeter all throughout the perimeter wherever i get the open shot oh, that's good now now scott you, you know why don't you ask uh why don't you ask uh daryl those questions you were asking me about about you know does he shoot off the dribble or does he you know, uh, oh. ask him those questions because I mean, I've only seen him play three times. And, sure. You know, I mean, he's gonna he's a pretty honest and a humble guy, so I think he'll he'll give you the the, the, so the true answer. Do you make your own shot, or or do you do more uh, footwork without the ball and <coughs> just get open? You know, in that open spot. Um, I probably from when my dad tries to coach me, he uh he tries to get me to get off the ball screens and um get open off of like back picks and. Yes, catch and shoot because uh, just like Ray Allen, he comes off the screen. He doesn't. Sure. Really, he doesn't really set it. I mean, create his own shot anymore, but he uh, comes off the screens. Sure. It's open. You drive the lane also. I drive the lane when I have the lane. Sure. Do you do any mid range or is your game mostly outside? Um. This season it was sure. outside. Now what what do you play like a two three or? Uh, on my team I played the three. Oh okay. Yeah. And so do you crash the boards? Like how many rebounds a game do you get? Or are you so far outside that? Oh, I had, um, I think one game I had like 10 rebounds. Okay. Yeah. So it just kind of depends on the three of the other team, if it, if they're going to bring you inside or? No. it, it, when, it, when, it when we needed rebounds, I got the rebounds. Okay. How many offensive boards do you average a game? Offensive, I think two or three. Okay, that's not bad. It's not bad for a guard. Yeah. The, the thing, Especially that's out in the uh, perimeter. You know, I, it's funny, you know, um, Daryl, you said something about when Scott was asking you a question, you said how, how your dad tries to coach you is to come off the screens. And, you know, your dad knows the game really well because I've actually sat with him a couple of games that I went to see View Park play and, you know, just talk basketball with him in, in, in the stands. And he really knows the game. You know, he played – I, I kind of remember when he played. He 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 was a good player. I don't know if he could shoot it as good as you. I, I'm going to be honest. Your dad might get mad about that, <laughs> but but I don't know if he could shoot it as good as you can shoot it. But I tell you what, he was a good player, and um, I think your dad knows basketball. So I guess I guess what I'm saying is, I think Scott that his dad is is coaching him, you know, to play the right way. Yeah, and. Um, and he does play the right way, and you'll see him play tomorrow, Scott, at, yeah. at the event. And and I think one of the things I, I believe, Coach Johnson, have you did you see View Park play this year at all? I, yeah, I, I saw the game um, against Crenshaw. Okay, I believe it was the second one. Mm. Okay, yeah, I saw that game. Well, I I think what I believe, and and I've been accused of being a very very good evaluator of talent over the years is that um, Daryl is is as good as any other guard that's maybe got a bigger name or at a bigger school. He's as good as all of those guys. And maybe uh, we'll see that tomorrow, I think. I believe that we'll see that tomorrow. I believe that he will stand out. Uh, the practice I went to for the West Side, Scott, I felt that he was one of the two or three players that stood out amongst all of these guys that we're talking about and we're almost yeah. done with their roster uh Westchester uh Cameron Young and um and Leon Gooden and so um I think I've covered the West roster 
So he stood out as one of the top two or three guys, in my opinion, um, at the practice I went to. Yeah. And he, he does a lot of little things well. I think we'll all see that tomorrow. Um, I'm not I'm not putting too much pressure on you, am I? No, not at all. Okay. Have, have you, you have you heard from uh, any schools yet? Uh, not recently. Um, how's your GPA? Uh, it was at a three nine two, but uh, three nine two. Yeah. It's, wow, that's impressive. It went down just a little. Well, three nine two is yeah. It's pretty hard to maintain that. Yeah. Like when you say down a little, are you talking like three six, three seven? Yeah, he's probably talking about three nine one. <laughs> <laughs> you look, what, what type no. of schools are you looking at? Like Harvard, UCLA, or? Um, honestly, I'm just looking at a school that has my major. Yeah, and it doesn't really cost that much. Okay, now wait. When you guys hear what he wants to major in, I know, so I, I'm not going to say. But okay, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Daryl say. Go ahead, Daryl. Uh, I want to major in astrophysics. Wow. Well, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Now, for those of our listeners out there, Coach Johnson, who don't know what astrophysics is, you know, our show is specifically geared <coughs> to focus on high school, prep school, and small college basketball. We have some listeners, you know, that work in a cafeteria. We've had them call in. We get yep. calls from all over the world. We we have listeners that are, you know, you know Facebook fanatics. For those of our listeners who don't know what astrophysics is, I'm going to let you explain that. Well, um, it's basically the combination of the study of astronomy and physics. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that's basically it. It's not much more than that. Okay. You know what's great about that, though? Whenever uh, the coach draws up a play for you and says, you got it, you can say, hey, it ain't rocket science. <laughs> 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 yeah. Of course oh. I got it. I'm a rocket scientist. <laughs> you, you, you guys have to understand one thing. When I first met Scott, he was a student of mine many years ago. Scott was a, was a comedian. And now Scott is a <coughs> professional storyteller. So Scott will come up with some some good stuff. So that's pretty good, Scott. I got to give uh, you that. When I, when I was at UCLA, when I was a sports editor there, uh, there was this uh, cute girl that worked in the uh, classified section. She was an astrophysics major, and I used to use that line all the time with her. <laughs> oh, oh, it ain't rocket science? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, I got gotcha. you. Uh, always good for the laugh. <laughs> okay, well, um, my thing is uh, with, with Daryl is that um, – I believe he can go far in basketball yes. if that's what he if that's something he wants to pursue and if that's something he chooses to pursue. And obviously a three point nine two, nine four? Is it nine four or nine two? It was nine two. It was nine two. Okay. Three point nine two. Coach Johnson, you and me together don't don't have a three point nine two. <laughs> if we add both of our GPAs up, man. That's why we're coaching, right? I, I almost That's why we're coaching. There. I almost got there my first semester at UCLA. Really? I got like a 3.84. Okay. And that was like a, yeah. Hey, View Park Prep's a good academic school, too. Yeah. They're not giving away grades, you know. And, and when we when we get to uh, to uh, Gian, yes. see, I got it right. When yes. we get to Gian, we're going to find out New Millennium doesn't give away grades either. New Millennium's a pretty good school, What's too. What's your GPA? My GPA is at 3.0. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's good. That's I mean, that's still two threes, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Where that's you, good. What do you look where are you uh trying to go to? I'm trying to go to either Cal State Dominguez Hills or Cal State LA. I'm trying to stay close to be honest and major in business and entrepreneurship. Nice. That's awesome. It's not rocket science. <laughs> <laughs> See? You see, Scott's a funny guy. I okay. go to the well. Okay. <laughs> he goes to the well. Okay, I got you. Well, I don't know about, you know, if you say that again, I'm going to I'm gonna have to scratch a record or two. Hey, that reminds me. Where's the boss? <laughs> hey, who, who's the boss? Uh, Chris. Oh, Chris uh, is uh, working tonight. That is a real job. Oh, I thought yeah. maybe I scared him off by saying the line one too many times. No, no, like, we're good. That's it. I'm out of here. Good. Hey, uh, our phone number is 1-800-893-9562. What's that? 1-800-893-9562. If you have a question for our guest tonight, call in 1-800-893-9562. Whether it's basketball or astrophysics. Yeah, or entrepreneurship. Sure, sure, okay. or entrepreneurship. Jayan can get a little bit in there, right? Yeah. Okay, so, all right, well, we're going to get to the south side here here after our commercial break, but I just want to kind of wrap up uh, this, this west side team. And we're going to get back to the west side too, Daryl, a little bit, but... 
wrapping up the roster. So let me ask you, you went to two practices. Who stood out in your mind? You know, I've already told the listeners that you stood out, but who stood out in your mind when you went to those two practices this week with with the players on the West Side team? Well, start off, uh, got to give, you know, credit to Jason Carter because if, if he wasn't running the floor like, like he's supposed to, then he wouldn't have got the buckets that he get. So okay. Jason Carter definitely stood out to me because – he made shots when he when we needed to, and we needed that we needed those shots too because we were down. Um, Cameron Young actually stood out to me. Um, Cameron, um, very athletic. He um, rebounded over everybody. He blocked shots off of like just catching up late. Right layups. Um, and he, he had a um, a decent out out um, out shot. Yeah, he, shot. Cameron stood out too. I agree. I I, I agree. Cameron stood out. We've had Cameron on the show before, actually, yep. and uh, Cameron was a great guest. So, okay, what we're going to do is take a quick commercial break. Uh, Jeremy, uh, let's pay some bills, and uh, we've got um, some more uh, basketball to talk, and we're going to talk a little south side uh, with uh, with uh, Jayon. Okay, Jayon. We're going to talk a little <laughs> south side with, with Jayon. Jayon? Yes. Jayon? Yes. I'm going to say it 100 times until so I get it right. <laughs> Jayon. We're going to talk a little south side with Jayon and talk about his practice today and, and who stood out in his team. Let's roll some commercials, Jeremy. We'll be right back. Hey, it's what? Coach Miller. You're listening to my show, Time Out with Coach Miller. I want to talk to you today about my favorite car dealership located in beautiful Hollywood, California. It's called Gem Motors. Gem Motors is located at 5639 West Sunset Boulevard. If you want a high-end automobile that's at a great price, whether it's a BMW, a Mercedes, a Jaguar, or a Porsche, go to my friends at Gem Motors. They have a beautiful indoor dealership located at 5639 West Sunset Boulevard, right across from Home Depot. Go see my friends at Gem Motors. Tell them Coach Miller sent you and get a special discount. The phone number is area code 323-962-9696. 323-962-9696. Nine six nine six. Sixteen made a dream with this basketball. Coach Miller on the court and we going hard. Pass the rock to the paint. I give him my all or be like Chris Paul. Shoot the three points, y'all. Look, it's time out with Coach Miller. Fourteen straight conference championships. We winners. It don't stop from the bottom to the ceiling. Cause all I know is win and we win it. Full focus, we got a topic to discuss. High school, prep school, small colleges, yup. Another special guest today, listen up. It might get a little hectic from the stuff we discuss. Hey there, fans and friends of Time Out with Coach Miller. This is a special announcement. Why don't you become a cobbler maniac just like me? Yeah, cobbler mania is an outfit run by Shay. Yeah, that's right, Shay. She makes homemade cobblers. These cobblers can be purchased at the Golden Bird at 8300 Southwestern Avenue. And or you can go to the Farmer's Market in Culver City Tuesday from 3 to 7 p.m., you can go to the Farmer's Market in Torrance, Saturday, 8 to 1. Or the Farmer's Market in Hollywood, Sunday, 8 to 1. Yeah, Shea makes these fantastic homemade cobblers. It's unbelievable. Wait till you try them. Yep, Cobbler Mania is uh, known. They have reviews on Yelp. They've been on the cover of the LA Times food section back in 2007. And they've been rated as one of the top 10 L.A. County Farmers Market food vendors. I'll tell you what, if you try some of this cobbler from Cobbler Mania, you will become a cobbler maniac, just like me. Yep, in July 2004, Shay founded Cobbler Mania, and she's still in love with what she does and loves turning people into cobbler maniacs. Tell you what. Go check one out, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Tell her Coach Miller sent you, and you might get a special cobbler for free. Look, 
It's time out with Coach Miller. 14 straight conference championships. We winners. It don't stop from the bottom to the ceiling. Cause all I know is win and we winning. Full focus, we got a topic to discuss. High school, prep school, small colleges, yeah. Another special guest today, listen up. It might get a little hectic from the stuff we discuss. Hey, it's Coach Miller. You're listening to my show, Time Out with Coach Miller. I want to talk to you today about my favorite car dealership located in beautiful Hollywood, California. It's called Gem Motors. Gem Motors is located at 5639 West Sunset Boulevard. If you want a high-end automobile that's at a great price, whether it's a BMW, a Mercedes, a Jaguar, or a Porsche, go to my friends at Gem Motors. They have a beautiful indoor dealership located at 5639 West Sunset Boulevard, right across from Home Depot. Go see my friends at Gem Motors. Tell them Coach Miller sent you and get a special discount. The phone number is area code 323-962-9696. 323-962-9696. Welcome to the 500 Club. We the best, my whole team tough. Close to 100 Division Ones I built up. Dedication and hard work. Step up to the court, I'm like, who ready to lose first? 14 times champs every year earned feet to the court let me get in my zone hands grip to the ball let me get in control non-stop can't quit that's the winner's quote i'ma just keep doing me hear the crowd as they cheer 18 out of 19 coach of the year time out with coach miller listen clear listen. two times a week listen to me on the ear over 30 wins it was for four straight years first to win state my high school and college career over 30 wins it was for four straight years first to win state my high school and college career we are live at www.skidrowstudios.com so skid Row studios Dot com. They can watch and they can listen live right now. We are on the air. And, and for those of your friends that uh, aren't listening right now, um, if you want to uh, listen to them later or tell your friends uh, to check out uh, Giant and Daryl later on, uh, you just go to uh, YouTube and you can pull up uh, Time Out with Coach Miller um, on Skid Row Studios channel. Or you can go to iTunes, and we're available there as well. Uh, it's a free, uh, it's free on iTunes, and you can subscribe there. Just type in "Time Out with Coach Miller." Hey Scott, I think it's kind of cool that we're on iTunes. So if if um, wait a second, I'm going to get this right right now. It's 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 Kyan Giant. I got it, Giant. Yes, it's almost like Giant without the T. Yes, Giant without the T. Okay. Did Giant. I get did I yeah, get it right? You got it right. <laughs> Spelled like it sounds. Yeah. Giant. 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 So if you aren't listening right now to Giant and you want to hear him or see him, you can go to iTunes and download the show and listen to him later. So but if you want to listen to him now, hopefully you're listening now. Right now. He's on the air. And we're about to talk about the South Side team. And we also have across from you over here, straight across from you, we have, uh, wait a second, I got it, I got him. I've got Randon Nevels from New Designs Charter. Okay, now what, New Designs Charter and New Millennium, <coughs> are you guys in the same league? Yes. Yeah, we are. So you guys already know each other. Yeah. So, yeah. Is it like all the new schools? <laughs> they, they all end up together? Yeah, something like that. Okay, so you guys have played against each other this year. Right. A couple of times. Who won? We did. They team barely a couple of times. Both both times? <laughs> yeah, both, both times. times. Okay, so so um so Giant won both games. Yes. Against hold on, I'm gonna get it right. Uh Randon. Yeah, Randon. Oh, okay. All right. Let's talk about that. Talk, tell me about both games. Um, both games was pretty good. Uh, Randon 
was the best player on their team. So that's who we focused on most of the game. Before the game, that's who we talk about. At the time, that's who we talk about. Um, either we'll be double teaming or that's just a person we got to stop. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Um, most times I would be sticking them because I was one of the best defensive players on my team. And then other times we'll have our point guard, Anthony McLean, stick on them. But most – that's – Basically, what we focused on the whole game, Randy, Randy, Randy. Okay. That's because we know his brother played the year before, and that's who we had to focus on. So as soon as we heard he had a little brother that I was playing, we had to focus on him next. Okay, I got a question. Randon, is that brother who played the year before outside in the green room right now? Uh, no, that's not him. That's a different brother? Yeah. Okay, I got you. Okay, we've got a call. Let me take this call. Caller, you're on the air. I got a question for Jayan. For for who? Say that again. I got a question for Jayan. Jayan. Did he say it right? Yeah, he said it right. Okay, I'm just checking now because, you know, I'm learning this tonight. Okay, Jayan, go ahead. Uh, uh, what's your question? Like, I want to know, like, what is your, like, um, business aspirations? Like, wh like, what's the name of your company going to be? What's it about? Um, my company would be called FOT, which stands for Future Tomorrow, because it's basically saying that young people are the future tomorrow and that people can't take us for granted just because we're young. Uh, okay, so, like, like, what do you, like, where do you, base, like, want to base it at, though? Well, base for my businesses so far, like, that I'm trying to come up with is, like, either a clothing line or a music production studio type thing. Because for clothing, most people just wear, like, different stuff, like, that don't really make sense sometimes. And I want to make something that's, like, meaningful type thing, like, future tomorrow. So that's the first thing that popped in my head. Like, people that take, uh, older people that take younger people for granted type thing, thinking that we don't, we're up to no good all the time. Just make it seem like we're bad people, but we can make a change in the world just like everybody else can. I think that there's a lot of potential in a clothing line, actually. I think that, that you can make a lot of money with that if you hit it right. Right. I got an idea. That guy sitting next to you, he knows something about astrophysics? No, this side. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> See, what I'm thinking is you could get some kind of ideas from, from Daryl that you could turn into a clothing line. Right. You know, something that people don't know about and haven't seen. Mm -hmm. Make it popular, you know? Just yeah. a thought. Just I a guess thought. you. Anyway, uh, caller, thanks for calling in. And are you coming to the game tomorrow to see uh, Giant play? Yeah, I'll be. Okay. So the game is at East Los Angeles College. And the, the, uh, the South Side game goes at 3.30. And they play the Valley region team. And then at 5, the West Side game... Daryl plays the East Side team. And then later on, now admission for the game is $10. You can get a ticket at the door. Okay. La you. Later on, there's a top 24 underclass game later on that night. And, and that top 24 underclass game, that game is actually free. There's no admission charge for that one. So, um, but if you want to see Giant play, uh, you need to be there. His game goes first, so you need to be there probably a little before 3.30. All right. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for the call. Okay. Our phone number again is 1-800-893-9562. Jeremy, we had some calls waiting, and I guess uh, with our commercial break, we lost a few. But the, the phone lines are open right now, 1-800-893-9562. Call us. We've got uh, some guys in here, and we'll talk a little basketball and, and what they did this year. So, Jayan, let's talk about what New New Millennium did this year. How was your team, and, and what did you guys do? My team was pretty good. We made it to the second round of playoffs, but we got kicked out by Annie Berg. Um, we went, or we lost two games during the league against Frederick Douglass, and then, yeah, that's about it. That's about it. Okay, so um, was it a would you look back on it? It's your senior year. Did you feel like it was a successful year for you on the court? I feel like it was a successful year, but it could have been better. I felt that we could have did better, especially in the playoffs. We lost by three. So 
I felt that if we had a better practice that the day before, that we could have had a better game. And I felt like we just wasn't working as hard as we should have in the playoffs. Okay, I got you. Okay, so um, let's uh, let's stick in your league right now since we've got Randon over here. Randon, how was your season? Uh, our season was actually a rough one. We had a young squad. It was me and uh, about two other seniors. Everybody was for freshmen. So the seniors had to carry the team. We had a coach come in from, uh, he was an ex-NBA player, so that he, helped us out, he helped us out a lot, helped us break down other defenses and teams. So we got a couple wins. We made it to the second round in the playoffs. Nice. So so both teams, both your teams went to the second round. Now, what 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 division were you in? Division five. Okay. And and the same? Yeah. Okay. Now, you guys know who won Division five in the city this year, right? View Park. Right. Who? Park. View Park? Oh, yeah. okay. No, I, I know. I'm just, I, <laughs> I just was given, you know, I was going to, that throws me back to Daryl. So, Daryl, um, did you guys just kind of just cakewalk through the city this year in Division Five? Was that just, did you have a close game in the, in the playoffs? <clears throat> no, we did not have a close game in the playoffs. What were the scores like? Um, we, be one team 97 27 another team 90 to 27 uh wow yeah those are some pretty solid whoopings <laughs> i mean when you're getting upwards of 100 and keeping them you know at about 27 <laughs> yeah, i mean that's that's all around that's that even my first year <laughs> women's team didn't lose any games like that <laughs> well they were pretty dominant and um and Daryl was, uh, to me, he was, yeah. I, I'm going to say he was like their their kind of quiet MVP. And that, those were playoff scores? Yeah. Yes. Wow. So they're going to put you guys in a higher division? Um, I don't think so because uh, we probably have to have uh, more students come down to the school. Oh, oh! Yeah. Is it all based on school size? It's based on school size, population, school. In, oh, in the okay. in the LA City section, it's based on school size. But there's one little caveat: if the school wants to move up, Coach they Johnson, can up. Yeah, they can move, can move up. up. Now you're in Coach Johnson Washington Prep. You guys are in the Division One. Yes, sir. Of the of the city, always and always yeah. Washington. One of the one of the <laughs> tried and true. You know, when you think about. The, the old school, Scott, yeah. in the city section, you know, you know, Washington, Crenshaw, Fremont, you know, Dorsey. You think about certain schools. A lot schools, of history. You know, that, yeah, a lot of history there. I think we figured it out, though, last time you were on the show, that that Washington, we said they had never won a city right. championship. Yeah. We figured that out. Except You're, for my freshman. Well, yeah, but we're talking varsity. Talking varsity. Okay, so so <laughs> we're we're... We're actually kind of looking for you to make that happen at Washington and be the first Washington Preps team to win a Division I city championship. Okay, here we go. Okay. Yeah. Can we get this done? Oh, of course. Okay. All right. What's what's the timetable? When you want it. I want it right now. Well, I was going to say ne <laughs> next year, but, I mean, is that is that asking too much too soon? or We're going to try every year. How about that? Okay. I like that answer. I like Coach Johnson. Okay. I, I want to say one thing about it. View Park, um, they definitely, uh, in my opinion, would have been one of the top teams in Division One, and um, I, I easily had them in the Final Four if they would have competed. They were a very, very good team this year. They had a. Uh, I, I was surprised at your level of team play because a lot of you guys have the individual accolades, and a lot of times when you get that much talent together. It's hard to get him to share the ball. Um, and, and I got one question for you. How did your coach get you guys to do that? <laughs> um, honestly, it was just we had more freedom now not that the, the other coach, um, Harold Jones, was released. And after that, we felt more comfortable playing with each other. We felt more comfortable passing the ball to each other. It was just more of a, a inside thing from each of us. Okay. So, wait, Daryl. So you're saying that that under the new coach, Coach Henderson, right? Yes. That you had more freedom, or you had less freedom? We had more freedom. We had more freedom to uh, to make a mistake 
okay. and not be punished right then and there after that mistake. We wouldn't. We had the chance to make up for that mistake by getting it back on defense, stopping mm. the ball, getting this charge, right. steal anything. Okay, gotcha. So was the old coach one where if you made like a mental error on the floor, it was like instant, you're out, um, or even call a timeout and call you out, take you just, out, or it was basically it was just like that. Okay. So so that made you what uh, as a player tell the audience how that made you play or or how that affected your play. Um under that kind of coaching I felt more more nervous to make a mistake. I felt more anxious to get get the, the ball out of my hands cuz I didn't want to make a mistake and get out the game, but then again, I wanted I wanted to do good. Okay. Okay. So were you at View Park all four four years then? Yes. Okay, nice. So did you have two different coaches or three? I had three different coaches. Is that right? Wow. Is that right? Wow. Coach Johnson, you know what that's like. Coach Johnson, for some people who are listening tonight that may not have heard him before, Coach Johnson got hired at Washington Prep like in October. Okay. D did you hear what I said? October. Yeah. You know, basketball season starts the yeah. end of November. Yeah, you know? exactly. And so, you know, those kids at Washington had a similar thing. They had, you were the right. third coach right. in, in three years. Is that what happened to you, Daryl? Did you have a different coach your sophomore, junior, and senior year? Yes. Okay. So how, how was that for you? Is that, is that Was that hard for you to adjust to? Or, or how, how did that play out in your, in your high school career? Well, in my... During my sophomore year, well, freshman, start of freshman year. So okay. freshman year, I didn't make the team at all. I didn't make varsity or JV. So I worked worked real hard over the summer. I um, played summer ball with the, um, the high school varsity team, and I made the team come September. And then after that, uh, the season was over. I didn't play much, but I got on the team, and the coach got – he left, actually. He left the school. Okay. And then the new coach – New coach came in, Coach Harold, and he uh he got relieved after my junior year. Well, so no, so during he, during about October. Oh, October of of no, your junior year or no your senior November year? November of my senior year. Right. So he coached you your junior year. Yes. And and yes. There, there, who was the coach your sophomore year? D'Artagnan Stamps. Okay, good. So you had you had you had wow. Stan, Coach Stamps. Coach Harold Jones, and then this year, Coach Henderson. Wow. Can you imagine that, Coach? That's hard for a player to three coaches in three years and, you know, three different systems. Now, now, uh, Randon, you, did you say that you had a new coach this year too? Uh, yes, uh, uh, Aaron Davis. Okay. And so how many coaches did you have in your high school? Uh, actually, my freshman, sophomore year, I didn't make the team. I didn't make my basketball team. Mm. My coach told me I wasn't good enough and that uh, I would never make, play a varsity squad. So wow. just, that just gave me fuel. To, every summer, I worked in the gym from like 10 to 10. I was in the gym just shooting, doing little dribbling drills and everything and got on the varsity team. The whole school. Yeah. yeah. That's great. <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, yeah, I'm going to send him my, vi my, uh, my video this year. Okay. So you, so you had a different coach your junior and senior year then? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And no coach your freshman or sophomore no, year. No, coach. Gotcha. No. Just, just in the gym by yourself. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, Jayan, what about you? Um, we got a new coach this year too. Oh my! Is this is epidemic? No kidding, Scott. I've got four guests on the show, three players and a coach, and they all. Coach Johnson was new this year. Yep. And all three of the players had a new coach this year. It must have been a lot of turnover this year at the yeah. coaching ranks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John, you had a new coach this year. Yeah, our new coach was Spencer Schultz. Okay. Um. Yeah, I didn't make the team my freshman year because I supposedly wasn't good enough for my coach. Okay. And tenth and eleventh, uh, I made I made varsity my tenth grade year, and then eleventh grade year I didn't really play that much tenth or eleventh, and then once we got our new coach. He gave me the ability to show what I can do on the court, and that led to a lot of good things for me this season. So getting a new coach was actually a good thing for us. Um, our whole starting five probably didn't touch the touch the court our tenth and eleventh grade years. So okay, as a 
as bench warmers, 10th and 11th, and being starters 12th grade, like, I think we had a good, really good season. Right. Because we got to show what we can do and that we can make something of ourselves on the court. No no question. No question. Okay, uh, let me give out our, our phone number one more time. It's... um. Um, let's go, uh, 1-800-893-9562. Now, um, let me ask you a question. Um, let's go back to, uh, the other thing that's interesting tonight, Scott, is all three of these players are in the LA Classic tomorrow. Yep. And they're, they're all from the division five level of the city section. So I'm kind of, I kind of like that in a way. I'm kind of proud of that is that the division five is being really well represented. Yeah, well, it sounds like the Division Five has some really solid teams. I mean, uh, you know, View Park. You know, I mean, that's uh, you know, when it, like where I came from, it would be like the uh, I always thought of the rank the divisions based on you know, like Division One, like how you know how what kind of a team they actually fielded, and uh, so because I always thought of Division One as the powerhouse, right, and the others would just be like your schools that you never heard of um but in this city it seems very different you know where you know it's, it's well they just all the way through yeah they just um i mean division five doesn't mean you're bad and i think a lot of people think that that they yeah. don't know i think tomorrow if you come out to the game and watch these guys play um you know uh giant and 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 randon are playing at three thirty. uh the, for the South Side team against the Valley, and Daryl's playing at five for the West Side team against the East Side team. Yep. You, you're going to see these guys play, and you're not going to really notice any difference when you're watching them play compared to players that are at the Division One level of the city. I, I don't think. And uh, you know, come out and see for yourself. You be the judge. Now um, we're gonna we're gonna. Uh, take another quick commercial break here. We've got to pay a few bills and we come back. We're going to ask Daryl a little bit more about his team at view park this year. We'll give him a little more uh, time to talk about that. So Jeremy, let's take a, a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Hey, it's coach Miller. And I want to tell you about Maya sportswear. Maya sportswear is located at 1400 South main street in Los Angeles. That's down in the garment district. Maya Sportswear has the best deals on rhinestone, embroidery, and silk screening. They specialize in uniforms, t-shirts, and shorts. Go to Maya Sportswear, tell them Coach Miller sent you, and you'll get a special, special deal. Their phone number is 213-742-0742. And they are located at 1400 South Main Street in the Garment District in downtown Los Angeles. Maya Sportswear for the best deals in silk screening, custom-made uniforms, hats, embroidery, rhinestone, sweatshirts. Go and see them. Tell them Coach Miller sent you and you'll get a special discount. State champs, high school and JC. He was the first coach to do it in California history. Coach Miller, he can beat any team. Got shooters on the court and dunkers dunk everything. He got to win, so the plan is defeat. Been coaching on the court before he turned 18. From 08, going down to 93. He was the conference champs, home of the LACC. Youngest coach to beat 500 teams. 43, everybody can't do it like he. A coach is something he was destined to be. Now we got a radio show to discuss some things. Talking informative conversations. Listen to the real. Tuesday and Friday at night from 10 to 12. A live show. Tune in and listen well. Special guests and take audience calls as well. Hey, this is Coach Miller. I'm excited to welcome All-American Trophy and Engraving Company as a sponsor to our show. All-American Trophy is located in Montebello, California. They have been in business since 1958. Current owner Mike Bomber and Paul uh, Purdom have over 70 years experience in the awards industry. 
they can be reached at area code 323-725-1962 or go to their website, www.aatrophyco.com. Please tell them that Coach Miller sent you. 16 made a dream with this basketball. Coach Miller on the court and we going hard. Pass the rock to the paint. I give him my all or be like Chris Paul. Shoot the three points, y'all. Look, it's time out with Coach Miller. 14 straight conference championships. We winners. It don't stop from the bottom to the ceiling. Cause all I know is win and we winning. Full focus, we got a topic to discuss. High school, prep school, small colleges, yup. Another special guest today, listen up. It might get a little hectic from the stuff we discuss. That's higher than Daryl's. <laughs> okay, we're back. We're live. And uh, and we just, uh, we're, we're having a good time tonight. Uh, Coach Johnson's over here. He's hanging out. Coach Johnson's the best, man. He, uh, I'm going to have to bring him on the show. Like, uh, I, I better check with his wife. Uh, his, his wife be like, well, why are you going out on Friday yeah. night to do timeout with Coach Miller? It's the second time. Well, because Coach Johnson is coaching in the game tomorrow. Coach Johnson is coaching in the L.A. Classic. He is one of the coaches for the top 24 underclassmen um, game, and that's going to be a great game. That's at 630. <clears throat> Admission for the top 24 underclassmen game is free. Tickets for the earlier games are ten dollars. Can be purchased at the door. Five dollars for children, twelve and under. Active duty military free. Now, uh, the, the final game that night, the top twenty-four underclassmen game, that's free, no charge. So that is. Um, you want to laugh? Well, why is that no charge? Well, because why is that no charge? <laughs> Thank you, Scott. You know, Scott, you're supposed to be on, you're supposed to be on that before me saying it. But anyway, good job, Scott. I was giving you some space to speak. Okay, <laughs> working on my not interrupting. Okay, hey, can you be stronger than your excuses, please? <laughs> can you make yourself stronger than your excuses? I am stronger because that's not an excuse. I'm I am making more space for you to speak because I'm working on my not interrupting. Oh, okay. So I am making myself stronger than my excuses. Excellent. Power moves only. Exactly. Power, power moves only. Okay. <laughs> our, our our sponsor, Coach Johnson's the best. <laughs> our, our, our sponsor, Power Moves Only, has these great wristbands. They're available for sale, by the way. Hey, is Samson refing? I, yeah, he is. <laughs> Sweet. You'll get to see him tomorrow. Who's announcing? Uh, you will be. Uh, you're not doing all three games. Oh, nice. But but you will be doing one <laughs> or two hard. of them. It's hard to do three games. Yeah, you will be doing one or two of them. And um, anyway, Randon, you got your wristband today, the Power Moves Only wristband. What's, oh, yeah. What's, his, what's the affirmation on this one? Well, you know, I mean, coming to high school, this uses as an example, coming to high school, freshman year, you just, you're like, you don't even know what to do. It's crazy. You're just doing your own thing. And, uh, like, late work, you don't even... Try your homework and all that. So, sophomore year, you kind of get bumped in the head a little bit, and it just kicks you in the head. You can't be making excuses for about about not doing your work and not uh, turning in like assignments on time and stuff like that. That uh, is going to mess you up. Like, you could just ask anybody right now. But uh, yeah, that's kind of what I get out of this. So read the affirmation. It says, "Make yourself stronger than your excuses." That's right, Scott. You want to read that one more time for Scott? God says, make yourself stronger than your excuses. That's yeah. a good affirmation. <laughs> That's a great affirmation. And and Coach Spoon came to the practice today. Um, Coach, he came to the practice today, and he was wearing his from when he was a guest on the show. And and Spoon and, is great. Yeah, and Spoon was wearing his, Scott. And he said, I haven't taken it off since I was on the show because I love this affirmation. And what I told the players, and you were there when I met with the Southside players at the end of their practice today, and I gave them their wristbands. And I said, you know, if there's one thing that you get out of this whole event, hopefully we're here to honor you and 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 give you some recognition that you deserve. But do you remember what I said, Jayan, about you, that? You told us that even though, like, this is just to get us in and out the gym, that we shouldn't take it off after this whole thing is over. Yeah, and why did I say that? Because it's a good, it's a good quote. 
Because so. because I said I said it is a good quote. But the point of this was, uh, Randon, do you want do you want to reflect back to the practice earlier today? What did I say about this? If you live your life this way, what will happen, Randon? I don't. I can't say I remember. Okay. <laughs> Power moves only. Power moves only. That doesn't sound like a power move. <laughs> no, it sure doesn't. Coach Johnson, again, he gets an A. He's got two A's right now going. Giant, what um, what did I say about this affirmation about in terms of living your life that way? I forgot to. Okay, you oh, forgot to. that's too? not a power move. Okay. And I can't put Daryl on the spot on it because I didn't speak to his team about it. I but didn't he speak would have remembered West. it because he's got a 3.92 yeah. Q. But had I had I spoke to his team, he would remember it. Here's the thing. If you want to be successful in life, don't make excuses. Right. Okay, that's the bottom line. Because that's what 95% of most people do is they make excuses. You know, when I learned it, Daryl, I learned that concept, and it was so clear to me, was my freshman year in college. I, I learned it. I learned it. I saw it. I was on my own. I was in college. I was struggling. I was poor. I was homeless at 18, trying to figure out how I was going to survive, how I was going to eat. And I was going to class every day anyway, because I wasn't going to make an excuse but it still didn't crystallize my mind yet what I needed to do in, in this concept that, that Power Moves Only is sharing with us. But here's what happened. Here's how it crystallized. There was a student in one of my history classes, and they were there like I was for the first month, let's say, maybe month and a half, and then I didn't see him again. So, Scott, about three, four weeks later, I saw this guy on campus, and he had a, a cast on his arm. Yeah. And I asked him, I said, hey, weren't you, in my, weren't, you, weren't you in my history class? I don't know his name. I didn't know his name then. I said, hey, weren't you in my history class? Uh, Professor Gilmet, I remember the teacher's name. He says, yeah, yeah, you know, I had to, I had to, I had to drop the class because, um, you know, pointed at his arm because I broke my arm. And right then it was so clear to me that as an 18-year-old, I realized that, you know what? People make excuses. I mean, right there, that's when it crystallized in my mind, Scott. Like, you know what? So what? You broke your arm. What does that yeah. mean that you can't go to class? So you're going to drop your class that you've invested six or eight weeks in already. Yeah. Okay. And not get any credits for it. And and because you broke your arm, what, you can't take notes with your other hand? Or have a tape recorder? Or, you know, borrow them from a girl and photocopy them? I mean, you know, I mean... What if, what if the cast was covering, like, a life-threatening staph infection that he was battling for, like, four <laughs> weeks? Okay. Okay. Remember I warned you, Scott, as a professional storyteller? He is a professional storyteller. He does that for a living. He gives shows all over L.A. Make and yourself he tells, stronger than that staph infection. Yeah. Well, how about... Power moves only. How about, how about make yourself stronger than your excuses? Because don't we all make them? So what I do... Jerry Rice would have sawed it off, and he would have gone back out there. Sawed off the cast? Or not Jerry Rice, uh, Ronnie Lott. Ronnie uh, Lott would have sawed off the cast? Sawed off a finger in yeah. the game. Went back in. Yeah, well, you know... He's, he, he's a tough dude. Hey, he's he got, made himself got, stronger than his excuses, and that's why he's one of the greatest NFL football players of all time. That's why he has multiple rings. Right. He just can't put them on all his fingers. And, and this is what this is what I said today, Daryl. And I said, and if you want to be rich and successful, don't make excuses. Don't. Uh, Jerry, uh, Ronnie Lott's rich and successful. Yep. Okay, really rich. Okay, so... That, that's the key. I think that's one of the, if there's one thing in life that'll get you over, Randon, and make you success is don't make excuses. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Are, are you, are you guys, are you guys picking up what I'm laying down? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I am. Okay. All right. I hope so. All right. It well, ain't rocket science. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> See, it's, it's all about knowing when to throw it in. <laughs> Okay. So, the timing, where's, huh? the, where's that blonde girl at, yeah. in the classified section? You know what? But <laughs> let's look at it like this. Coach Johnson gets the job late. Okay. Did he make excuses? Did he say, hey, I got the job at Washington on October and we can't have a successful year? No. Coach Johnson got the job late. 
he made himself stronger than his excuses, and they won 20 games this year at Washington, his first year. That's pretty good, okay? Now, I'm sure he would have liked to do better than that, but the bottom line is that's what I'm talking about. And so, Daryl, that's how, you know, I've kind of went from being an 18-year-old who was homeless, living in his car, going to junior college, to doing whatever I've done in basketball and, you know, uh, you know, other things in life. So I just have lived my life that way since I turned 18. And I realized that, that that day that that kid told me that cast thing made him drop out of his class. Really? I mean, what were you in the cast for three weeks? Uh, and you, and you couldn't leave the hospital. I mean, it was just a, a simple arm cast, uh, Scott. It, it's itchy. It's itchy. <laughs> Okay, I got you. All right. Well, Coach Johnson is itching to get to talk to this, uh, talk to us about this top twenty-four uh, all-star game that we're going to see. The top twenty-four underclassmen game tomorrow at six thirty, and admission is free for that event. That is a mistake. There should be, there should be some kind of price. These guys are good. You they know what? Really, really. It's good. not because they're not good. Here's the thing. Um, there's a rule. Always a rule. Oh, yep. is there really? There's a rule. <laughs> Coach Miller is known as being an expert on rules sometimes. And there is a rule that um, Trent Cornelius shared with me from the city uh, section, L.A. City section office. And we're following it. You can't charge for an event that underclassmen are in if they're in this kind of event and it is still during school, uh, the school year. Okay. okay. Exactly. So you can charge after the school year is over. And so we don't want anyone to lose their eligibility or get in any kind of trouble. So we're following the rules. Okay. And now for the seniors, there isn't that rule. Yeah. Okay. That's and so an extra treat for the basketball fans. Right. So that's exactly what it is. We made it dessert. That's why it's set up that way. It's not yeah. because the top 24 uh, game is more important, Randon, than your game or your game, Daryl. It's not because of that at all. It's because we're following the rules. It's the prize winning cobbler. Okay. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, the, it's the dessert. It's the prize winning cobbler at the end of the meal. Okay. And uh, you pay for the meal. The dessert is free. Okay, that's how that works in uh, this restaurant. Hey, by the way, <laughs> we have a great sponsor, okay, uh, Cobbler Mania, and they're going to be at the event tomorrow. They're actually part of the brunch. They're going to be supplying the dessert, Scott, for the for the brunch. And are you guys all coming to the brunch? Yes. Yes, I, I am. am. Yes. Okay, excellent. Okay, I so, am too. Okay, Coach Johnson, <laughs> excellent. Do you like Cobbler? Yes. <laughs> okay. Where can they find it, Cobbler Mania? Well, they're going to find it tomorrow because <laughs> I think after you guys eat the cobbler tomorrow, you're going to be cobbler maniacs. <laughs> yeah. And I think that you're going to, you, once you try the cobbler, you, you, you know, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Coach Johnson, you're going to be a cobbler maniac just like me. Okay. I'm telling you. I don't you, know if I can afford to be much more. Of a well, <laughs> you're, you're going to be a cobbler maniac when you try this cobbler from Cobbler Mania. So they're one of our sponsors. They're going to they're gonna have a dessert at the brunch, and they're going to have a booth in the gym where they're selling cobblers, and it's going to be great. Uh, you'll find them there in the gym tomorrow, Scott, selling cobblers. That's where you'll find. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Excellent. I, uh, uh, one question. Is yeah. cobbler, the, is that the secret weapon? Whoever eats more cobbler is going to win as a... <laughs> probably not in the first game. <laughs> yeah, probably not the first game. That South Valley game is going to be a little sluggish, baby. Daryl will have some chance to digest his food before he plays. Well, I don't want the 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 South guys and the and the South side and the Valley guys to eat too much at the buffet because they won't be able to play good. We're filming the game and we're going to have it available to scouts and parents and and uh, coaches. So yeah, we don't want it to be like uh, that uh, that story in Stand by Me. Um, remember the cobbler eating contest? Oh boy, tell uh, us the story. No, that's just, that's Stephen King's story. Well, okay. Uh, basically, uh, there was a heavy <laughs> kid that the kids used to make fun of. And uh, he got his revenge by going to the pie eating contest, uh, cobbler eating contest, and he drank a bunch of castor oil before he uh, 
before he uh, <laughs> ate it so he'd get really sick. And then he just totally ate it and beat everybody. And then he started vomiting and it was projectiling all, you know, blueberry filling and everybody got sick and started vomiting on each other. So all, all the kids that picked <laughs> on him in school, Scott, yep. they and got the vomited adults. on? And the adults. And they all vomited on each other. And, uh, you know, it was great. Stand by me. It's a great <laughs> movie. Oh, boy. It's probably the best the Stephen winners? King adaption. How about the winners get cobbler? How about that? Uh, the winners get cobbler. Get the winners get cobbler. to take some cobbler home with them. <laughs> well, you yeah, know, and you want some cobbler tomorrow? Yeah, I want some cobbler. <laughs> Thank you for bringing us back. We went from yeah. cobbler to projectile. I to, love cobbler. <laughs> to vomiting. There's not gonna be I mean, any cobbler left when I'm done. Yeah. Okay. Well, here, here's the thing. Now, um, I'll tell you what. This is going to be a great event. We got this brunch and award ceremony, recognition ceremony. We're going to um, have a, a, an award and recognition for each and every player because all of you are special, or you wouldn't have been invited to participate you all did something special right. this year your senior year and um and and then we're going to have some special awards for some coaches and a couple special awards for some players and um maybe one player in here might get a special award we'll see we'll see <laughs> but uh, all the players are going to get an award and they deserve one and and on top of that we have a really special lifetime achievement award we're going to present to coach Howard Levine from Grant High School. He's been the head coach at Grant High School for 28 remarkable years. Very, very consistent. And and is, he's still coaching. He's still going strong. So, um, you know, uh, he's a great man and is uh, is an excellent um, coach. And we're going to have a special award, uh, lifetime recognition award for him. Now, let's get back to this top 24 game. Coach Johnson, you're coaching this game you're coaching one of the teams along with Coach Spoon Chaney right. from Rancho Dominguez. Tell us a little bit about the players. And I think there's a View Park player in in this. Yes, there is. Mr. Henderson, Mr. Darius Henderson. Yeah. Oh, um, he's pretty good. He made an impression. <laughs> made an impression at the workout. Uh, very competitive guy. Uh, plays hard uh, like his teammates. Um, and I'm looking forward to watching him play. And the reason I said that, uh, it should be a charge is, is, you know, sometimes underclassmen get treated a little poorly and not seniors, <laughs> but, um, this, this should be a very good game. Um, Darius is one of the outstanding players. I'm look, looking forward to seeing also uh, Abel, I want to get his last name right out of Marshall high school. Is it and Abel, uh, uh, Andre, Andre, Andre. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing him. He's, he's, He's a rebound, and he just just consumes, just eats it up off the rim. Um, I also was looking at uh, is it Travis, what's it, Travis Patrick out of Chatsworth. Okay. Very special player. You're, you're going to like watching him play, and then you have... Uh, and you can watch him play for free. Right. Yeah, Be because we're not charging for that for that dessert, Scott, for that cobbler dessert. That prize-winning cobbler. We're not charging for that. Now, you're going to have to pay $10 to get in to see uh, these guys play. You're going to get to – but it, they'll be worth $10, yeah, I think. seniors. Yeah, they're seniors. And, Last uh, chance to get a look at them before they move on. Yeah, and you know what? I mean, some of these guys are still looking for scholarships, right, Coach? Right. Okay, so, well – I mean, we better see some some good action out there, right? Right. Okay. So uh, let me let me ask you this, Coach Johnson. If you, what do you think about that big kid from Rancho Dominguez that you've got uh, playing in the top twenty four game? Is Keith Brooks? Keith Brooks the third, about uh, six 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 seven. Keith Brooks the third. Is that his name? Keith Fisher. Keith Fisher, that's right. Out of Rancho to me. Yeah, Keith, F Keith Fisher the third. Oh, Thank you. Yeah, he has more than a chance. Yeah, he's more good. More than a chance. He's a he's, very good player. He's very good. <coughs> he's very good. I like him. Okay. He can score inside, outside, handle the ball, shoots it well. Um, it's going to be interesting to see him and uh, Travis go against each other. Okay. Do you give a nod, a slight nod to one or the over the other, or are we going to? I like them both. Okay. I don't want to make neither one of them mad. Okay, because um, <laughs> they're, they're both aggressive players. Uh, you know, sometimes you appreciate battles, right? You know, and I think this is one that you're gonna like to see. Okay, now uh, speaking of underclassmen, um, let me ask. Let me let me go back to uh, Daryl for a minute. 
Hey, Daryl, what um, you played with Darius, who's on, who's in the top twenty-four game, but you played with another good underclassman mm -hmm. this year. He was a junior, six eleven. Chance. 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 Chance Comanche. Chance Comanche. Who's that? Chance Comanche. Oh, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> so what? Where? <laughs> now, did did he commit to UCLA already? Um, or I don't I don't know anything about anything. Okay. He hasn't told me where he is thinking about going to college. He hasn't told me anything. Okay. He just said, you'll see when I get there. Oh, is that what he said? That's exactly what he said. Wow. I like that, though. I like that. Uh, you know, don't give away don't give away your cards. Scott, I have a feeling. I went to the View Park Fremont game. That's when I first saw you play, Daryl. And I first met your dad over there. And... When I walked in, I walked in, and about a minute after me, Steve Alford came in with uh, David Grace, okay. who's his top assistant mm -hmm. at UCLA. And I, I talked to him, you know, for about 15 minutes there. And, um, you know, by the way, let's give a special shout-out to UCLA because— Eight because, clap. Because <laughs> an eight clap. Oh, no. Oh, no. Please. <laughs> Okay, let's not give that much of a shout-out. Scott's a UCLA Bruin, by the way, if you didn't know. Um, Steve Alford did a great job with that team this year. They they really did a good job, and I think they got beat by the team that probably will cut down the nets Monday night. I, I'm pretty sure Florida's going to win this thing. Um, does anyone here want to debate that with me? I think Kentucky is looking fierce right now. Really? They're, they're looking like an NBA team. Okay. Because they are an NBA team. I think Wisconsin get past Kentucky. Do you? Yeah. I hope Wisconsin gets past Kentucky. Me too. Okay. Why do you say that, Daryl? Well, they play they play um, team basketball. They pass the ball. They swing the ball around. They, um, they look for the best shot, not the good. They take the best shots. They do. They have athletic guards. They have a big that can score inside and out. I don't see. I don't see Kentucky beating them. Oh, okay, well, Kentucky probably has more talent, right? Yeah, they have first-round lottery pick talent. More than one, right? Yeah, they ha they could be the lottery. Basically. Yeah, basically, they, you know, they, <laughs> yeah. They, they could be the lottery. You're right. You're right, Scott. But, I, you know, I hope Daryl's right. Um, I think that uh, I think uh, Kentucky, I think, is the favorite in that game. Um, does that sound right, Scott? Yeah, I mean, I always root for Kentucky to lose unless Patino was coaching there. And, uh, you know, but um, I expect them to win. I root for them to lose, though. You know, I'd, I'd rather see uh, Wisconsin win. Yeah, I would, too. And I think Daryl's right. Wisconsin has a chance because they're going to play more team ball and they're going to be a little more disciplined, take great yeah. shots. But but uh, I think Florida's going to win this whole thing. Coach Johnson, what do you got there? I'm with Kentucky. You're with Kentucky, too. <laughs> because I met Calipari. Great guy. Okay. Great guy. He's funny. Is he? Yeah. Okay. I guess you're wearing the blue. <laughs> you know that Florida beat him three times this year, right? Yes, I do. Okay. All See, right. I lost all three games. Okay. <laughs> all right. Now, Daryl, what would happen? Let's just say you're wrong about Kentucky and Wisconsin. Let's just say Kentucky does beat Wisconsin and Kentucky plays Florida <laughs> in the championship. What would happen there, do you think? Um, I'm going with Florida if Kentucky plays Florida. Okay. Better coach. Yeah, I think so, too. I think he's a better coach. Okay, uh, Randon, do you have a pick in these in this Final Four uh, games that are going on tomorrow? Do you, You've got, you've got uh, Kentucky and Wisconsin. You've got UConn and, um, and uh, Florida. It's probably going to end up being Kentucky and uh, Florida. Is that an all-SEC final? You know, I don't know. Maybe. Giant? Um, I feel I think that Kentucky is going to win it, to be honest. Well, who's who's going to play in the finals? Who's winning Kentucky both games? Kentucky and Florida. Oh, so you got an all-SEC final? So, Coach Johnson, give me your two picks. Kentucky, and I'm going to pick UConn. You're going to go with UConn over Florida? Yes, I am. Are you really? Underdog. They are the underdog. Okay. And, and Daryl, you got... And he lets his guards play. Yeah, he does. UConn traditionally picks it up end of the year, too. Yeah, they're, they do. They're a tournament team. Now, Daryl, you had Wisconsin over Kentucky. Who do you have in the other game? I'm going to go with UConn. Really? Really. 
Daryl's got both underdogs here. He's got like he's got he's he, a man of danger. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like my elite eight picks. You, you know that no one won, no one won the billion dollars, right? right. To, to have to have the perfect bracket, no no one won that. You know, I was sixteen and zero the first day. I was sixteen and zero the first day. It figures. You look at your record. The, you, you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thank he, got, you. he got the elite eight right, also. Yeah, I was sixteen and zero the first day. The second day I didn't do as good. I was about uh, twelve and four. So there went my perfect. There went my billion dollars. Okay, and Scott, who are your two picks for tomorrow? Um, I think Kentucky and uh, probably Florida. I mean, I like Connecticut, uh, but I think Florida's a lot better than Connecticut. I think Kentucky, though, um, you know, I think they're going to beat Wisconsin. I think that their players are just after a year of playing, they're just too good. Yeah, now they're not high school now they've actually played as a team they know how to play as a team um and uh but i'm hoping florida beats them you know solid you know i hope florida spanks them Sp you know. <laughs> yeah wow. and, then, and then they can all go pro officially okay you know, be, you know so that way they, it'll be like getting a raise <laughs> yeah from what they're currently getting in Kentucky. Oh, I thought you were going to stop, but you kept it going. No, it <laughs> never stops. Scott Scott doesn't ever stop. Trust me on this one. Scott doesn't stop. He does not stop. So, okay, so now my let's get we've covered the the NCAA and the reason why I had to do that, I'm going to tell you guys a funny story. I've got a staff of three or four people working on this event for tomorrow. Okay. Giant. I get it right? Yes. Giant. Giant. Sunday, fix me, coach. I, I'm fixed. Giant. I got it right. Okay. So we released, our staff released the, the, the game information, right, the rosters and stuff to the media. And some newspaper reporter uh, emails back and he says, this is what he says. Do you know that Saturday, April 5th is the final four games? Question mark. Well, you know, I, I didn't respond. Um, my staff told me, a member of my staff. So I, I, but here's what I'd like to say. Wouldn't you rather be playing tomorrow, Daryl, than watching someone else play? Yes. You, you see, Coach Johnson, Coach Johnson, wouldn't you rather be coaching tomorrow than watching someone else coach? Of course. Okay. Players want to play. Didn't they invent DVR? DVR. So uh, just tape. this sort of a situation. Right. TiVo, everything. Yeah. 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 What? You, you can TiVo. get the score so you're not and then just watch it. it. I so ESPN yeah. is for. A shit. good yeah. game is a good yeah. game. Yeah. Randon, don't it's they only have only two games? It's don't, not like it's eight. Right. Randon, don't they have like little phones that you can watch the games on even now? I believe they do, yeah. What are those things called? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of different things. iPhones. I, I mean... <laughs> Do, yeah. do, can you get, like, TV on yeah. a phone now, Daryl? I have the app on my phone. I can watch the game before my game. You can? <laughs> yes. <laughs> do you think I have the app on my phone? <laughs> no. Probably not. Probably not, no. You probably do. You just don't know how to use it. Oh, oh. no, you definitely don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl, do you do you have a smartphone? Is yes, what, I do. I have a dumb phone. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, um, I'll tell you what. It's going to be... More fun to you, be at East LA College tomorrow. You have a 20th century phone. Um, <laughs> it's going to be more fun to be at East LA College tomorrow, watching these guys play, and and getting to see them get honored, um, than it will be for me to sit at home in my living room and and watch those games on TV. Because the one thing I may have a dumb phone, but I can record those games and I can watch them later. So, there you go. Okay. All right. Final four party at Coach's house on Sunday. There, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I remember when the phones were this big. Is that right? Yeah. Oh. With, with the rubber, oh, with with the the rubber, rubber antennas. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Our phone number again. Ooh. Our phone number again. If you have a question for Daryl, if you have a question for Randon, if you have a question for Giant, you can call us. one 800 893-9562. 1-800-893-9562. Coach Johnson, while we're waiting for a call or two, let's go back to your top 24 uh, game. Why don't you read that roster? Do you have do you have the roster? 
Yes, I do. Okay, let's go over that roster. Uh, we have Abel. Andrade. 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 From, we have from what school? John Marshall High School. That's right. Adrian Gutierrez. Okay. From Verdugo Hills. Now, do you have any stats on these guys as well? So, yeah, I do. You do? Yeah. What do you got? Um, Mr. Andrade has 12 points, 8 rebounds, 3 assists. Nice. Uh, Adrian Gutierrez. Uh, no, he has his phone number. Social security number, maybe? No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't read that. <laughs> Don't read that. <laughs> yeah. Alexander Walker out of North Hollywood High. Oh, he can shoot. Yeah. He can shoot. That kid yep. can shoot. Now, I've, do you know him? No, I Darryl? don't. That kid can shoot the ball. Can he shoot as good as Daryl? No. <laughs> <laughs> Underclassman. But, but he can shoot. He can shoot it. Yeah. He's got, he's got a year to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> what what, is, what does it have? Alex Walker stats? Uh, six and five. Six, five rebounds, one Point three assists. Okay. Okay. Just like a shooter. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Chris Tovar, Huntington Park, uh, 16 points, two rebounds, three assists. Nice. And we have Mr. Henderson out of View Park, Coliseum League Championship, ESPN Cali, ranked number 33. He's good. Yeah. He's good. That's my boy. Is that your boy? Yeah. He's good. Mm -hmm. I two, like him. 12 points. <laughs> Five rebounds, four assists. And we have Mr. Jalen Gilmore. Ah. Where does he play? Plays at Washington Prep. Where? Home of the Generals. Where? Washington Prep. Washington Prep? You know what? <laughs> Washington Prep, that deserves that deserves a little applause. Yes, that deserves a little applause. That's Jalen Gilmore. <laughs> Mr. Gilmore, 15 points, seven rebounds, six assists. And he was only a sophomore, right? Was he a junior? Oh, he's a junior. He's a junior, okay. He's a junior. 36 inch very. That's all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then we have Mr. Jamal. Mr. Hustle. Um, Narbonne High School. First team. Jamal all Hicks? Hicks? Yes. And he's another one. Uh, this might be his social number. I remember him. 360 points, 120 Definitely rebounds, so. 80 assists. Okay. That's gotcha. his average. Gotcha. Is it average? <laughs> you know that you know that Jamal Jamal Hicks, his brother played for me. That was a long time ago. I don't even know if Jamal was born then. His brother plays brother's name was Devin. Okay. Devin Hicks. Good player. Which one's better? Uh Jamal. Okay. Yeah. But Jamal's only a sophomore. Right. Right now. Right. He's a very good player. Yeah. Very, very good player. Um and we have Mr. Staggers. Um, oh, oh Jonathan Staggers oh, from Dorsey, yeah, yeah. freshman. <laughs> this guy. It, <laughs> let me let me ask Daryl because they're in your league, right, Daryl? Yes, he is. So tell us about Jonathan Staggers. He can shoot the ball. He yeah. gets he gets to the basket. He can shoot the ball. Is that he right? Can get to the free throw line. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Is he the best freshman in the city? I haven't seen all the freshmen. So, I, I'd probably, probably leave that one up in the air. Ooh, that's a tough one. But I'm going to say no. No? No. Who's a better freshman in the city than Jonathan Staggers? Tell me. I think Mr. Spoon Chaney has one. Is that right? Right. And who is that? Uh, I don't have his, It's like a Sasquatch sighting. You know you see Sasquatch, you've seen him. You can't know his name. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's a, you know he's there. <laughs> but this kid is man. He's he's good. He's a big. Okay. This, and, and this might be the return of the city bigs with this guy coming. Okay, I got gotcha. you. But I'll let I'll let Spoon tell you about him. Okay. All right. I got gotcha. you. You know how we coaches are. You know, we try to keep everything close to the best. Okay. Except well, for guys like me. Who who else who else is there? Who else? Oh, uh, we team? have. Joseph Robinson, probably says Charter High School. Oh, yeah, I like him. I Shooter, 12.8, like yeah. two rebounds, one. So how come, can I ask you guys a question? How come shooters don't have high assists? Because shooters, what do you guys think? Because they're shooters. It's just in their DNA, huh? Just, yeah. I'm not giving you the ball. It's just, also, <laughs> it depends on the team, too. Yeah. Because I, I tried getting assists this year, and, and some, some of your players just don't have the mindset to go get the ball when you throw it to them. So. You know, I mean, personally, I always think of the shooter as, you know, when they get the ball, You're that's, shooting that's, that's the whole flow of the offense. Exactly. That's, that's exactly what You create your own shot. Yeah. You're not 
I mean, giving the ball up to unless you have, yeah, for real. For unless you got a shack in the post. I was actually told to shoot the ball. Yeah. Almost every time I get the ball. <laughs> the big told me that. Is the that big? right? Yes. Oh, he tried to get his rebound stats up, huh? Exactly. <laughs> I got your rebound. That's exactly what he said. I got your rebound if you miss. I like that. Yeah. I mean, it works well. I mean, especially if you know the way the two shoots. I, I, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, Coach uh, Johnson, before you get to the rest of that list, kind of mark where you're at. We're going to get back to that. I got a call. Caller, you're on the air. I'm with Khalil Flowers from Nine Yards. Khalil Flowers, he is on the West Side Boom. team. Boom. You got you got a, you got a te- you got a teammate on the phone here, Daryl. What's up, Khalil? What's up? Are, <laughs> are you excited about uh, the LA Classic tomorrow? The West Side play your team. The West Side plays the East Side. Yeah, ready to uh, win tomorrow. I like that. I like that. You know, I went to, Khalil, I went to uh, all four teams practice. I went to one of of all four teams. And um, you guys, you guys really, the West Side, they're taking it serious. We're taking it serious. They're competitive. They want to win. And the other, I want to say, in front of the guys in here, the South Side guys, they went at it today pretty hard, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd actually like to see the West Side play the South Side. I'd like to see that. Round Robin. Round Robin. Mm. There was a little mini tournament thing. Mm-hmm. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> Randy, see, Randy, see, you, John, you're the one who's supposed to come up with that as the entrepreneur and the business guy. You, you're the guy. <laughs> yeah. you should, let's dump the top 24 game. Let's have the winner of the, the east side, west side play the winner of the valley south and let's schedule south, it. south region. And let's schedule it for the day of the let's NCAA championship game. <laughs> yeah, to really piss off the media. Might as well. Yeah, let's bring the, the winning teams back to play Monday night and really piss. Khalil, one of my staff sent out this press release about the game and the event to all these newspapers and some newspaper reporter wrote back in the email he didn't say oh great well we'll be there he said do you know that the final four is on saturday like six question marks wouldn't you rather play tomorrow than watch someone else play khalil i'd rather play and be competitive than watch other people be competitive yeah i'm with that there you go it's i'm like with torture. that that's why teams cry when they lose in the Elite Eight. Yeah. Because they don't get to play. They don't want to watch. Yeah. You know, I like Khalil. Khalil is a hard. We talked about you earlier on the show, Khalil, um, when we went over the West West Side roster. Khalil is a hard-playing guy. And um, and Daryl had, Daryl had, was breaking down the roster really for us. And, and um Daryl, what what about Khalil? Now we got another West Side guy on the, uh, you know, kind of not in studio. He should be here. Yeah. But what about Khalil? How, tell 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 Khalil about his game from an opponent's perspective. Well, Khalil, he um, like I said before, he can get to the basket when he wants to. He um gets to the free throw line easily, and if he's open and he shoots it, it's probably gonna go in. Hmm. Khalil, are you a better shooter or driver? Uh, I say driver. Okay. What do you think, Daryl? I agree with him. He is a better driver, but he can make shots when he needs to make shots. Okay. Khalil, what? Uh, tell us a little bit about your experience this week uh, leading up to um, the event tomorrow in terms of um, uh, the practices and stuff uh, that you went to. Oh, well, um, the practices were, um, cool. It, um, impressed me how, like, everybody, like, got along instantly and, like, worked together and shared the ball and stuff like that. So I think that, uh, the game tomorrow is a definite win for us if we play like we practice. Okay. You're pretty confident then? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm not going to bet against you, man. I'm not going to bet against you. Hey, by the way, uh... Khalil, you got a bright future, but you gotta you gotta do. Uh, I'm gonna let Coach Johnson tell you about uh, what what you have to do. You gotta make uh, some special kind of moves. What kind of moves? Power moves only. You gotta make power <laughs> moves only, Khalil. You, you gotta start, start making some. For that. You gotta start making I gotta some. Gotta make what? Power moves only. Power moves only. Oh, 
You got you got to start making power moves only. You got to you know you got a bright future, Coach Johnson. For him to have a bright future, he's got to make power moves only. You make that sense? Make sense to you? Yes, sir. Okay. So, are we going to see you tomorrow at the brunch and award ceremony? Yes, sir. Okay. I will. Uh, I will see you over there. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Thank you for the call. Cool. And congratulations on being selected. Okay, we got another call. Um, Jeremy, put the next call on if you can. We got a few calls here. I guess I, I, I realize, Coach Johnson, I get carried away listening to you talk about all those great young players, and then I I forget about the calls. Scott, I can't even hear. I can't hear it either. Can you? Can, hello? Hello? And I'm watching you live here in Oceanside. Oceanside. And I have a question. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I have a question for Andy. Who do you have a question for? I have a question for Randon. For Randon? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Randon is right here. What's the question for Randon? <laughs> okay, Randon. I was just wondering how many points we can expect you to drop tomorrow. Ooh. That is a good question. Ooh. I thought she were going to ask for his phone number or ask if he was single. Something like 30 points a game? I don't know about that one. I, it's an all-star game, so I'm probably trying to get 15, 20. That's about it. But but I know this. I know the more you play defense, the more points you're going to get. Oh, yeah. That I know. Defense turns into offense. It sure does, and pretty quick, too, in an all-star game. Um so, are you going to drive in from Oceanside to watch this game, to watch Randon play tomorrow? I actually am. I'm excited to see. I heard that all the players are super, super good. Um, so, I'm excited. You know what? The South roster is really good. I'm going to go over that. So, you stay tuned and listen to the rest of the show. I'm going to go over that South roster. We we went over the West Side roster, but we didn't go over the um, the South Side roster yet. And, and Randon is a special guy, but there's other special guys on that team too. And I know you're probably a Randon fan, but but you're going to see some other really good players with him tomorrow. So good, the, good. I'm a the game starts at 3.30 at East Los Angeles College. Ticket prices are $10, and you get to see two great games, and then you get a dessert game for free. <laughs> So you really get to see three great three great games for ten dollars. Pretty good deal. Very good deal. Okay. Thank you for calling. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Okay. And we got another call. Um, Jeremy, when you can put the next call on the air. Now let's go over the South Side roster. Okay, so we've got um should I start with, with Randon since we already kind of we got you right there? Randon Neville's new designs charter. Okay. Should I go next to John? Because you're here. Jian. <laughs> yeah. Should I go next to John? Um. Yeah. We go next to you. New Millennium. Yeah. Okay. Jian, Jefferson, Roberts. Yes. We'll get the whole thing out. That's the whole thing. Okay. Oh, okay. Long name. Now we've got we've got two guys from Rancho Dominguez. Oh yeah. Who 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 are they? Randy. Uh, oh, you you got it, Jian. Go ahead. Oh. Well, yeah, Keon and uh, Will. Big Will? Yeah. Big Will? Um, big Will? I'm seven expecting. feet tall. Yes. He's, big he's Will, big yeah. Will well, Brooks big. is seven feet tall and and uh, and uh, Keon. Yeah, I know Keon. You know Keon? Yeah. Ke ball with him. Keon Johnson. Yep. He's good. Yeah. He's yeah. good. He's cool. I like him. I, <clears throat> I liked him today. I like Keon a lot. Okay, and we've got uh, from San Pedro, we've got some guys. Quincy Thomas and Khalil. Dave? Khalil Dave, yeah. Little guard. Yeah. Okay. Coach Johnson, we have a guy from your school, from Washington, from Washington Prep. You got the big fundamental. We got the big man. <laughs> What's his name? Mr. Brandon Crawford. Mr. BC. Br Mr. Brandon Crawford. You know him? No. Daryl, you're going to... He's a kind of an unknown guy, and uh, I think he's only played one year of varsity. Right. And, and he's like 6'8", and he's... He's going to be really, really good. I mean, he's going to be – if he if he plays his cards right, 
he's going to be a high division one player. Right. He he just needs a little more time, but but he's seventeen. He's only played one year of varsity. Boy, he can be good. If there was ever a guy who was meant for a prep school, it's it's Brandon Crawford, because big guys take a little longer to develop anyway, and uh, and he's only played one year of varsity. You know, a guy like that, coach. You know, if he did go to a four year school right now, would probably not play a lot his first year or right, two, right, right. and so instead of going through that, you know, play fifty games at a prep school next year. And 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 get a lot more um, experience, and, and continue to get better and bigger and stronger. He's seventeen, right? And and see what what can happen for him. I mean, I think he's a monster in the making. Well, that's what all the all the interest is saying. That's a lot of the experts, a lot of coaches, yeah. guys that see him playing. He's going wow. The upside. The upside's yes. great. Yeah, the upside's great. Hey, from Fremont, we had a couple players on your team. Um, Do you know who they are? I know one of them are Frank. That's right. For those of you uh, that can't see it, this font <laughs> he has printed, it is like needle head small. Yeah, it's small. Okay, so the players from Fremont, you you, you nailed one, John. Frank. Uh, I don't, I don't Frank, remember the Craig, other one. Frank Be Betton. And the other one is? Craig. Oh, Craig, Craig. Craig Moody. Craig's got the dreads. Right. Okay, and from we have another guy from Fauche Learning Center. Is that is were they in Division Five too? Um, you know, yeah, they were. Okay, we've got Division Five. You got to say this, Daryl. We've got Division Five represented pretty well here. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a player from Fauche, uh, Kobe Martinez. He's good. Yeah, he's pretty nice. He's good, right? He's pretty nice. We've got we've got a player from Jordan. I like David Lynch a lot. Oh yeah, I like David. I liked him today. We've got a player from King Drew. He was there today. Toby. The big, right? Big, oh, big, yeah, strong guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Toby Obi. He's good in the paint. Obi. We need that wide, to, to, wide body. Wide side. body. Toby Obi. Got a good player from Locke. Was Locke in your league, Daryl? Yes, they were. Okay, do you know the good player they have? The guard. Uh, dark skin, about 6'3", 6'4", six, six, can shoot it. Yeah, what? I know you're talking about. Mike. Mike Chavers. Mike Chavers. Hey. He can play. He can score. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, can he can score. And from Narbonne? Coach, Coach, Coach Johnson, I'm going to let you say who the two Narbron guys are. Oh, my gosh. Reverend and Uchenna. Reverend and Uchenna. Yeah. Okay. Sure. And that closes out the South Side team. Now, let's be honest. Who would win that game if the South Side played the West Side? The West. The South. South. The South. The, the West. South by 50. The South. The South, the South by 50? By 50. By 50. By 50. <laughs> the West. <laughs> completely right. I, mean, I it's haven't already seen the a West. W in West. I haven't seen the West, but like the South, we're well rounded already. Okay. Well, these are two great teams. Oh, I wish I teams. could. You know what I wish I could do tomorrow, Daryl, is switch this up and like go, okay, West Side's going to play the South Side, but I can't because parents are coming and fans are coming and, <laughs> and I can't. Now, I'll think about that thing though. Which one of you suggested that? The, the championship game. The championship game. Who said who said that? Right. Yours truly. That that was Randon. Yeah. Randon, we might have to think about that. We might have to think about I'll that. Okay. I got another call. Caller, you're on the air. Hello, yes. Go ahead, caller. All right. This is a question for Randon Neville. Okay. I'm I'm pretty sure he has older brothers that used to beat up on him. <laughs> basketball. <laughs> At what point did he realize he can start beating up on other people like his brothers did him. Wow, that's a great question. <laughs> that's oh. a great question. Well, <clears throat> I used to let my older brothers beat up on me so I could get better. <laughs> so you could get better? Oh, yeah. That's a great answer. Yeah. That's a great answer. Oh, really? Is that is that your brother on the line? Obviously. I don't think so. He wouldn't do nothing like this. Your, your brother see, wouldn't yeah, do that? Brother. I see yes. one brother on the other side of the window yes, his there. brother would do it. Yeah, it's my brother, my older brother. You probably got a couple older brothers then, huh? And then, yeah. And then uh, your other brother's out there on the other side of the glass, right? Yeah, that's my brother. <laughs> is that your brother over there? Is he got glasses on with no glass in him? With no lens. He's kind <laughs> no of lenses. Style back. Yeah. What do you call it with the if there's no glass? In, would it be what? glasses? Is that is that like a fashion statement? No, to have glass lids. I have no idea. Yeah, glass lids. Not for me. Frames. Let me let me ask, let me ask this: Is there anything? Related to astrophysics in that 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 <laughs> equation of glasses with no glass in them. Not even. 
It not, not even close. It's definitely not rocket science. <laughs> <What's that>? Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, well, listen, um, are you going to come watch Randon Neville's play tomorrow? Hopefully. Hopefully. I'm working right now, so uh, if I get off work in time, I'll be able to. Well, wait a second. Are you going to work from now till 3.30 tomorrow afternoon? Make yourself stronger <laughs> than your excuses. <laughs> yeah, can you make your, can you, can you, can you learn to make yourself stronger than your excuses? Oh, really? Okay. Uh, well, I work 48 hours a week, and then I also train people in the gym, so if I have time, if I'm not working, I will make it down. Okay. But I know we'll put in work. He's going to put in work? Okay. Yeah. He, he better represent you is what you're saying, right? Oh, definitely. Okay. Do you okay. have glasses without lenses? <laughs> I do not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well... Um, next don't, caller. Don't, yeah, next caller is right here. Hey, don't take offense. We're just trying to help you learn the power moves only credo, which is make yourself stronger than your excuses. Yes. Okay, so I think you could use that when you're training people. Okay, so, uh -huh. so don't take offense. And if you want to get one of these wristbands, you can email our show. And that is uh, timeoutwithcoachmiller at gmail.com. And uh, we'll try to get you one, okay? All right, then. Thank you for the call. Okay, and we got another call, Coach Johnson. Uh, how many more guys do we have to go over on your top 24 list? Oh, that's not one. About uh, six more. Okay. Why don't you start on those six while I get this call ready to queue up? Uh, we have Miles from Fremont. Miles McClinn? Yes. Miles McClinn? Yes. Wait, wait. Daryl, you, did you? That's the point guard. I think so. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. Who else? We have uh, Sonny Angle from Manual Arts High School. Oh, Sonny Angle. I like Sonny. Sonny is the guy with the afro. The afro. Yeah. He can shoot. He can shoot, but you know what I thought he did the best? You, like, like when I saw you, you did a lot of things well, Daryl, but I thought you shot it the best. But you do a lot of things well. You know what Sonny does really, really well? He's a great passer. Yeah. He's a great passer. I mean, he's going to pass that ball. Okay, I like Sonny a lot. And then we have Mr. Narig Atamian from Reseda. Oh, Narig from Reseda can shoot the ball. 27 and 1. Yeah. He, he, a sophomore. Yeah. He can shoot the ball. I'm telling you, he can shoot the ball. He's good. You, you, are Daryl? Will you stay and you'll probably stay and watch your guy play, Darius? Right? You're yeah, gonna probably stay and watch the top 24 game. Yeah. I will. You'll see this kid. This kid's a surprise. Yeah. This kid's a surprise. He's out of the valley. You you liked him, Coach Johnson? I liked him. Yeah. I liked him. Okay. Okay. Who else you got on that on that team? Oh, that was pretty much it. Okay, we got it. I got another call. Caller, you're on the air. Hi, oh, I missed one. Okay. Right, we'll we'll come back. Caller, you're on the air. Hi, uh, this is Jelani. It's Jelani? Yes, Jelani. Okay, Jelani. Do you have a question for for one of our guests? Yes, I have a question for Jayan. For so Jayanne. Great basketball player. Okay. You have a question for Jayanne, and what's your question? Yeah. What makes a great basketball player? Um, What makes a great basketball player? Well, most basketball players are hard workers, and that's what makes a basketball player, like an overall player, uh, be able to take criticism when in giving, um, be able to ha be humble. When you like at the top, like if you're a humble person, you're a good. You can be a good basketball player, and be patient, and work on your skills every day. I think I think you hit on something really important there when you said be humble. I think being humble is important because it allows you to keep getting better. Yeah, right. And 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 Scott, you know, we've seen how many guys have we seen that were that were really super talented guys, but they weren't humble. And it got in their way of progressing. You, you've seen that, Scott. I've seen it where you could predict it before they even hit the court. Really? Uh, oh, I definitely recall, you know, recruits and players that, you know, wanted to impress you that came in and, you know, uh, and they just talked such a big game, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, where it's like, you know, sometimes like I, I don't, I'm not going to name names. Um, but yeah, I've seen, I've seen players where the talent didn't match the, uh, the ego mm. and sometimes it does stop you because it also makes you not as good a teammate. 
you yeah. know, if you're if you feel like you are the team. Um, you know, like for every player that thinks they're Kobe, there's really just one Kobe. Right. Right. Yeah. Why that? No, no question about that. Okay, so Coach Johnson, we had one more player to, to go over on your on your list. Last but not least, Kari White. Oh sophomore. Yeah. Wait a second. You can't I can't you can't forget My. You can't forget your own player. I can't forget my oh. own player. Kari White, he's a Say sophomore. He is, sophomore. He's good. Very good point guard. Uh, gets in, gets uh, easy buckets for his teammates. Okay. Well, you know what's interesting is you've got two great underclassmen in this game from your team. I think the future might be bright at Washington Prep. We might have a shot. I think, I think so. Coach Miller asked you to get that city title next year. <laughs> Okay, we'll see what we can do. Hey, Scott, remember earlier you were asking Daryl about um, the, the, the his scores, the playoff scores? Yes. Well, Daryl gave you some from memory. I'm going to give them to you factually. They Their first-round playoff um, game in the city was 90-27 to 27 over Harbor Teacher Prep. Wow. Mm-hmm. God. Well, they're going to be teachers. So. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm a teacher. Hey, I know. Hey, hey. no, there's nothing hey. wrong with <laughs> teachers. I'm saying, so you know, don't knock them. To, you know, for you know, getting beat in a basketball game, they're going to be, you know, uh, molding gonna... the next generation of uh, of of people. Yeah, know, but next generation of Darryl, Americans. But got... Daryl's going to be an astrophysicist. Well, yeah. I mean, what is that? I mean, you know, go so, ahead, coach. What do you got? I have a question for Daryl. Do you? What was the, your guys' record over the past four years? Over the past four years? Since you were a freshman. Or since you started playing. Um. Well, my sophomore year, I believe we went 16 and 17 overall. In league, we were 2 and 10. Okay. Because they're in a really tough league. Yeah, they're in a constant yeah. league. You know, they're in a yeah. tough league, and they were always the smallest school in there. Yeah. Okay. And my junior year... We did, we got better. We I think we went twenty one and eight, twenty one and nine. Mm-hmm. Like That's that. a big Overall. improvement. And over, in the league, we went eight and four. Came third in the league. Okay. And this year you were undefeated. Undefeated. Now you know, as you get older, you get to add ten more victories. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but what was your over? What, what was your overall record this year? Do you know? I believe we went twenty two and six. Okay. Okay. And Which, were you guys a senior heavy team? Yes, we were. We had, what, four senior starters. Wow. No, three senior starters. Okay. And two coming off the bench. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, and that, that I mean, it shows that you guys grew as a as a team. And it's, it's almost the same way like in the, uh, when you watch the NCAAs and you see your Butlers or your right. George right. Masons, right. you know, get up there and hang with the Kentuckys and the Floridas and, it's because, you know, they played together and, mm-hmm. you know, so they have that, mm-hmm. that bond. They know the way each other plays. Yeah, no no question. Now, what's interesting is their next playoff game, Scott, they beat Central City Value 97-27. to 27. Wow. And then the championship game, they beat uh, Douglas, Frederick Douglas, 86-60. to 60. So that was a little closer. At least that yeah. was more respectable. And then they, they, you know, they went through the state tournament and they won a couple games, and they had that heartbreaking loss to Renaissance Academy, and they lost how, lost by, what, two or three, Daryl? Three. Yeah. But it wasn't that close. It was closer than that, right? I mean, it was closer than three. It was like... We had them at one, at one point in the game. Yeah. And then they uh, called foul. Then we got tied. Then they hit a three. They hit a three at the end? They hit a three at the end. Point guard, what was his name, Mosley? To yeah. to win the game, two to three to win the game. We had the last the last second shot. It was a, it was an open shot for um Jordan, but it just didn't fall. Okay, so they they hit the you were tied and they hit that three mm-hmm. to 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 go up three. Renaissance was good. They were very good. We yeah, they were early in the year. Oh, you did. Yeah, yeah, they were good. <laughs> but in my opinion, View Park is better. I mean, if 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 they played. Ten times, View Park would win eight of the ten times, mm-hmm. in my opinion. And that's what's funny because high school and college basketball <clears throat> is not played at the best of, of uh, yeah. seven or best of five right, or best right. of three. One and done. It's one yeah. and done. And so the thing is, I can tell you guys, you, you know, having coached for 30 years, that my team 
sometimes I thought we had the best team, but we lost at the buzzer, you know, and, and, and didn't win it. One year we lost a state championship game up at the University Pacific on a tip-in with two-tenths of a second left. We lose by one. You know, I like to think that if we played them, you know, like seven times, we would have beat them at least four right. like they do in the NBA. So in the NBA, you really do get the best champion. You find out who the best team is because they, they're playing the series. You don't get that in yeah. high school or college. And that's kind of what makes March Madness fun in a way, Yeah, the NCAA, because, you know, you get what's considered an upset because it can happen once. And unfortunately, Daryl, you'll remember this game a long time because, you know, in my opinion, I think you're better than them. And you didn't win that game. And if you got to play them the best of seven, I think there's no doubt that you would you would prevail over Renaissance the best of seven. But it's not the best of seven. And coach, same thing with your game with Dorsey. I mean, that could have gone either way. If you would have played even the best of three, your wife's going to be really mad at me. <laughs> now you're going to go home. You're, you're going to be home late, and you're going to be I mad. Would. And you're going to be mad because because I'm uh, Coach Miller's making you remember that. But if, if if you played the best of three or the best of five, how do you know you won't win the series? But you don't. In high school and college, it's one and done. And so, Scott, that's kind of, again, though, what makes it fun in a way. Yeah, I mean, and it makes it a different sport. Or, yeah. Or not a different, yeah, it's a different, you coach it differently. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because when you are doing a best of seven, you know, a coach can work on matchups. Right, right. Be like, right, oh, okay, right. uh you know, you know, we can't stop Jordan. So right. let's try a double team or let's try, you know, putting a, you know, a four on them or something. Right. Here, <laughs> here's, here's my last state championship ring. One of three. Okay. Uh, this team had nine players go division one. Okay. 38. No. Great team. Unbelievable team. You know what? I, this is one of three state championship uh, teams I coached, and easily we could have had four or five more. Easily. But we didn't because it was one and done. And like Scott says, it makes it a different game. It makes it, you know, so I feel Daryl's pain. It's 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 tough. I mean, I've lost those games where, you know, I've won three state championships, but like I said, easily could have won four or five or six more. In my mind... In my mind, Randon, I'm thinking like, you know, I'm being realistic. I'm not, when I didn't have a great team, I didn't think I did. I didn't fool myself. I didn't lie to myself. I'm just saying we could have won a lot more state championships if it was not just one and done. So, but it is. Yeah. And so it's tough. I remember those five or six years that we ended early that someone upset us or someone beat us at the buzzer. And those are tough games to get out of your mind. Um, that one I was talking about. Two tenths of a second left. Mm -hmm. We lose on a tip in by one in a state championship game. Well, the next year was this team that I'm telling you about. This team that didn't lose and and won the state title. So, you know, sometimes you get redemption too. It's interesting because I mean, you know, you won like career like your career winning percentage as well, like eighty one, eighty three percent, something like that. <coughs> More like eighty eight or eighty nine. Eighty eight. Yeah. I just, yeah. Figured it's not that high. Yeah. 80, 80, so, and of those, you know, a lot of those teams that beat you, those were tip ins or yep. or buzzer beaters. Yep. Because they're always having to play their best game and catch you guys yep. on the downside. Yeah. And so those, I mean, because really, like, if you were to look at your at your losses, I bet like twenty percent of them would be those those buzzer beaters yeah, maybe even more than 20 yeah. percent or, or if not a buzzer beater it's a it's a it's, it's, a, a, it's a one shot not yeah. getting in it's a one possession game yeah and that's what i was getting with daryl is, is it was they lose by three but it was closer than that it was a one possession game and you know that's the truth scott and and uh when you're when you're playing those kind of games like we played the you know you those are the ones we lose when i ended my high school coaching career I was the fourth winningest coach in the history of California by percentage. And the first, of course, is easy to figure out. He's coaching at Matter Day. He's, he's the only one that's in the 90s. He's like 92, 93, 94%. And then um, I was fourth 
uh, in the history of California. Willie West was fifth, who was, you know, Coach knows Willie West was a legend at Crenshaw. Um, the, I think I'm third now because I think one of the guys ahead of me kept coaching and losing. So, you know, that lowers your percentage. Yeah. You know, when, when, you know, all it takes to go from 90 to 80, you can go quick. Yeah. All you have to do is one yeah. bad year. One yeah. 500 season. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so um, and uh, in, in, in junior college, I'm, I think I'm the first. I think I'm, I'm first in junior college. So, yeah. Um, but in high school, I think I'm third or fourth. So it was fun. Now I'm in prep school and I don't even know my record. Now, because, you know, I I do it for free. I do it as a volunteer, and it doesn't matter. You know, the record is is immaterial because we're doing it to to help players. So, anyway, uh, great show. Thanks for, for uh, making the show great. You guys are a great guest tonight. Um, we had a lot of listeners, a lot of call-ins. Um, people can get this. You need to tell them if they want to see you and they didn't see you, go to iTunes and get it, and go to U our YouTube uh, channel and get it. Skid Row <coughs> Studios has its own YouTube channel channel so you go on youtube and you type in skid row studios and then uh, skid row studios has and we're going to wrap this up here in a second what 29 shows jeremy about 25 shows right now 25 shows we're one of 25 shows so they've got a lot of shows and and uh we're proud to be uh one of them and uh we're going to be proud to see you guys play tomorrow okay don't so, eat too much cobbler don't. before you play. <laughs> Save the cobbler for afterwards. Save the cobbler for Coach Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Put the cobbler in the locker. Wait till you're done playing. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, you ready to play tomorrow, Daryl? Of course I am. Okay. Randon? Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. And I'm going to I'm gonna close out with my man here. It's not Cayenne. It's Jayanne. <laughs> Jayanne, are you ready to play tomorrow? Yes, most of this. Okay. You, you, you ready to go? Yeah. Am I going to see something? Yes. Can I, you know, this wasn't an accident, by the way, Coach Johnson, that I had the three guys on tonight that are all in Division Five, because I like to support not only the city section, uh, student athletes and coaches, but I want to support the smaller schools as well. Right. Because I don't think you guys get enough recognition or get enough love. And uh, so here we have you guys on tonight, and we got a little recognition for you and a little love. Well, I'd like to congratulate you. Thank you. Thank all of you guys on a great season. Um, your futures are bright. And um, you're going to be part of the first ever L.A. Classic. Yep. Yeah. With, with many more Sounds to come. Good. Many more, come. And many my more team to come. will be the first to win it, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I like Daryl. Daryl's competitive. Daryl, you know, I, I said it today, didn't didn't I say this today to you guys? I said yeah, anything, said it anything that I that I compete in, I want to win in. Oh, okay, if they're going to keep score, I want to win, and so that's a great attitude to have, and uh, you got to keep that attitude in the classroom too, because you're competing in the classroom too. So those of us that have a two point nine, but a oh, four point oh this semester, right? Those <laughs> of us that have a two point nine, that are not at a three point eight two, three point nine two. Three point nine two. Three point nine three. So you got to get a four point oh this semester. Those those of us that are a two point nine need to be a little more competitive in the classroom. I think. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. We close out our show <laughs> with our theme song. We have our own rap that Little Kev did Lil, for us. Lil Kev. Oh yeah. Yeah. I. You know I have a dumb phone. So you know when you call him Little, that's like. That's like <coughs> dissing him. Okay, you know? it's a little. It's, it's a little. little. <laughs> it's the word diss. Little. Yeah, that's like calling him tiny or shorty. Yeah. You know? Little. It's a little. Little. Little Kev did, did a rap. <laughs> it's our official theme song for Time Out. Yeah. If you're for Time Out with Coach him, Miller. If you're going to call him Little, you might as well call him Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> little Kev did this rap, and we're about to hear it now. Now, when you guys hear the rap, you guys just be real with me, and I'll be real with Lil Kev. Okay, you'll you'll just tell me if it's good or bad. Okay, uh, these guys get three point oh pluses. I think they will be real. Okay, <laughs> all right, Jeremy, let's let's close out with our uh, theme song and let's roll it. Sixteen made a dream with this basketball. Coach Miller on the court, and we going hard. Pass the rock to the paint. I give him my all to be like Chris Paul. Shoot the three points, y'all. Look, it's time out with Coach Miller. 14 straight conference championships. We winners. It don't stop from the bottom to the ceiling. Cause all I know is win and we winning. 
full focus, we got a topic to discuss. High school, prep school, small colleges, yup. Another special guest today, listen up. It might get a little hectic from the stuff we discuss. To the 500 Club, we the best, my whole team tough. Close to 100 Division Ones I built up. Dedication and hard work. Step up to the court, I'm like, who ready to lose first? 14 times champs every year earned. Feet to the court, let me get in my zone. Hands grip to the ball, let me get in control. Non-stop, can't quit, that's a winner's quote. I'ma just keep doing me, hear the crowd as they cheer. 18 out of 19, coach of the year. Time out with Coach Miller, listen clear. Two times a week, listen to me on the ear. Over 30 wins, it was for four straight years. First to win state my high school and college career. Over 30 wins, it was for four straight years. First to win state my high school and college career. It's time out with Coach Miller, 14 straight conference championships, we winners. It don't stop from the bottom to the ceiling, cause all I know is win and we winning. Full focus, we got a topic to discuss, high school, prep school, small colleges, yup. Another special guest today, listen up, it might get a little hectic from the stuff we discuss. Champs, high school and JC. He was the first coach to do it in California history. Coach Miller, he can beat any team. Got shooters on the court and dunkers dunk everything. He got to win, so the plan is defeat. Been coaching on the court before he turns 18. From 08, going down to 93. He was the conference champs, home of the LACC. Youngest coach to beat 500 teams. 43, everybody can't do it like he. A coach is something he was destined to be. Now we got a radio show to discuss some things. Talking informative conversations. Listen to the real. Tuesday and Friday at night from 10 to 12. A live show, tune in and listen well. Special guests and take audience calls as well. Hey there, fans and friends of Time Out with Coach Miller. This is a special announcement. Why don't you become a cobbler maniac just like me? Yeah, Cobbler Mania is an outfit run by Shay. Yeah, that's right, Shay. She makes homemade cobblers. These cobblers can be purchased at the Golden Bird at 8300 Southwestern Avenue. And or you can go to the Farmer's Market in Culver City Tuesday from 3 to 7 p.m. You can go to the Farmer's Market in Torrance Saturday 8 to 1 or the Farmer's Market in Hollywood Sunday 8 to 1. Yeah, Shea makes these fantastic homemade cobblers. It's unbelievable. Wait till you try them. Yeah, Cobbler Mania is uh, known, they have reviews on Yelp. They've been on the cover of the LA Times food section back in 2007. And they've been rated as one of the top 10 LA County Farmers Market food vendors. I'll tell you what, if you try some of this cobbler from Cobbler Mania, you will become a cobbler maniac, just like me. Yep, in July 2004, Shea founded Cobbler Mania. And she's still in love with what she does and loves turning people into cobbler maniacs. Tell you what, go check one out and you'll see what I'm talking about. Tell her Coach Miller sent you and you might get a special cobbler for free.